and through the playoffs, they're 21 and 7 in games played in November and December. And that's when you go to the playoffs. That's how you become a champion. Unfortunately for the Houston Oilers, if you go back a couple of years, in 1982, they had a 10-game losing streak. In 83, a 10-game losing streak. 84, a 10-game losing streak. Last year, a five-game losing streak. And it's the hardest habit to break, losing. Raiders are wary coming in here. They haven't been in here in a few years, but they have lost two of the last three times they have played the Oilers here at the Astrodome. Now, Lee Johnson is ready to kick the ball off for Houston, a one-hopper downfield. And Fulton Walker will run it back for Los Angeles. Good return out to the 26-yard line, and there Mark Wilson and the Raider offense goes from scrimmage for the first time. Frank Hawkins and Marcus Allen listed as the starters. Marcus still troubled by that bad ankle, and we see right now Napoleon McCallum is trotting out. So Allen will not start. Kester and Williams are wide receivers. Todd Christensen having another big year at tight end. Offensive line has gotten better and better week by week. Paralleling the improvement of the Raiders in the one loss column. Most far the center the Raider people feels as good as anybody in football. Hawkins running hard on a first and ten play. Gets to about the 28 yard line where a young linebacker from Kentucky who's all over the field John Grimsley makes the knockdown. Ray Childress, number 79, is a tremendous player. Second player picked in the draft two years ago. Golick, out of Notre Dame, the nose tackle. Richard Bird, a pass rusher at defensive end. Lyles, a spectacular linebacker, ran back a fumble, 93 yards for a touchdown last week at Cincinnati. Late in the game, but then the Bengals came back to win. McCallum breaks it on second and seven, and the Raiders go to the run on long yardage and get a first down run from the Naval Academy ensign. Bo Easton, the free safety, knocked him down, but well downfield. It was a nine-yard gain. And one of the things you'll notice about the Oiler defense under Jerry Glanville, it's basically organized mayhem. They blitz all over the place. They try to attack that line of scrimmage, and if you can break through that first line of defense... You can pick up a lot of yards as Marcus Allen on the sideline today, still with that bad ankle, does not like AstroTurf. Wilson, his first throw on first and ten. Wilson gets it, but he's down at the 32-yard line, a loss of five. It'll be second down and 15. I know it was Johnny Meads on the outside blitz. He got inside. It looked like Napoleon McCallum. He was right in Mark Wilson's face, and the ball bounces for the Raiders. There you see right in front of you. It's McCallum who misses the block. Meade strips it right out of his hand. Bounces right back up to him. That's the way the ball is bounced for the Houston Oilers. Against them. Meade's the outside backer. He's a blitzer. This team will come at you on blitzes all different ways. Everybody blitzes one time or another, including the safeties. Second and 15 for Mark Wilson and the Raiders. McCallum again hitting into the left side of the Houston defense. Robert Abraham, 56, an inside linebacker, and Keith Bostick, the strong safety, made the knockdowns. Steve Brown and Patrick Allen are the corners for Houston. Patrick Allen, a very highly regarded pass cover out of Utah State. Bostick and Eason are the safeties. McCallum has been coming on, playing better and better, averaging over four yards a rush. Now it's a throwing down from Mark Wilson and the Raiders, as you see, third down and 11. Watch Christensen. Let's see how they deal with him here. A lot of men up on the line for the Oilers. Come with a blitz. Wilson stands in, walks the long ball, and Doki Williams can't get to it at the 40-yard line of the Houston Oilers. Brown was covering, so the Raiders send out their punter, Ray Guy. The other thing that Mark Wilson's going to have to do now is recognize the kind of defense that the Oilers have on the field. They will at times come with seven defensive backs. They're not, uh, they're not bashful at all about bringing six defensive backs into the ball game. They have to be identified for Mark Wilson. A lot of, a lot of audibles today would work, I would think. Willie Drury, number 82, back to return the punt. Gets it at his 26. It's a good punt. Very high, a spiral that forces Drury into a fair catch at his 28-yard line. Flag down, Don. And it's at the line of scrimmage. Somebody might have been downfield early. A legal man downfield early is the signal. 37-yard punt with no return. I think you declined that one. They got pretty good field position here at the 28. Yeah, 
Uh, Glanville doesn't want it. Jerry Glanville. Ineligible downfield, number 59, offense, decline. That's the First snapper, down. Jamie Kimmel. So we'll be back to the Astrodome right after this. We're at the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. Mike Haynes on the sideline for the Raiders, one of the best players in the league at cornerback. Out again this week, apparently, although as you see in uniform, trouble with a leg muscle strain. And right now, the Oilers have the ball for the first time in this scoreless game. Warren Moon stands in. Hard throw, but Rozier catches it, and Mike Rozier, the former Heisman Trophy winner from Nebraska, gets out to the 38-yard line. It's an Oiler first down. One of the things that Jerry Glanville's done with his offense is allow a little more movement by the quarterback. This is Matthews on Sean Jones, and that's an excellent job, actually, allowing Warren Moon time, but that's the big matchup today. How Matthews handles Sean Jones. From behind, Bill Pakel, the nose tackle. The Raiders blitz on the first play. It's picked up, and nine yards on the pass completion to Rozier. Now Warren Moon, who quarterbacked his team in Canada, Edmonton, to five straight Grey Cup championships, drops to throw in another hard ball. This one's taken down at the 50. Drew Hill, a former L.A. Ram, goes up high and comes down with a 13 yards downfield. It's another Oilers first down. This is not a typical of the Oilers' start. They move the ball. They just can't sustain it through four quarters. At least they have not been able to after their first game. They played the Bears. The Bears should have lost here at the Astrodome. A lot of teams should have lost to Houston, but in the end, the Oilers find a way to fall out of it. Right now, they're cooking early in the scoreless first quarter. Pass is the name of the game. Another completion. This is Wolfolk. A good move on the strong safety, Stacy Coran, and Wolfolk is about 10 yards downfield. On a point to make here, the Raiders are primarily a bump and run defense as you look at the defensive line but in the first several snaps of this offense by the Houston Oilers the Raiders have been playing zone they blitzed a linebacker and both seal and Lester Hayes were very soft in coverage I'm surprised so far I see once again you you don't see him up on the receivers they're way off it's second down and less than a yard now for the Oilers Movement on the right side. Yep. Sean Jones jump. We'll see if he was drawn off. That's Steincooler who came out of his stance too early. Number Ball 70. Start, number 76. Offense. Still second down. Colin Eric Moran. It looked like it might have been Steincooler. Well, I at any they, rate, it's a foul call against the Oilers. I think they had their choice. New Orleans first on the board today. A 3-0 lead over the Jets at Giant Stadium. Jets will have a hard time sustaining the emotion of their... Upset victory over Denver Monday night. Best football game the Jets have played all year. Tampa Bay not having much of a year out in front. Houston's opponent next week, Miami, up 7-0 early. Second and five. Here's a blitz for Coran. Ball is intercepted. Rod Martin on the run for the Raiders has it back to the 39-yard line. Last week, the first pass that Warren Moon throw, threw was an interception. And this week, early in the game, he's picked off again. So the Oilers, as has been their history, drive down, then make the big mistake. From the left side, there you see Turan on a safety blitz, which is really unusual for the Raider defense. Martin just kind of almost fair catches that. Jim Romano, the center, makes the tackle. Warren Moon, Trump, was 3-for-3 three for, three for 31 yards before that fourth pass it's his 14th interception well he's four for four now but yeah. one to the other guys one the wrong way so Raiders second possession good field position inside the Houston 40 big rush again here's Mark Wilson doesn't like to run but has to three balls Oilers have it back at the 27 Wilson is still down they're going to mark him down. down. They're going to mark him down. Apparently they rule the field, freed the ball. Go we'll watch again. These players are never over until the replay <laughs> official says it's over. From this angle, the hit by Steve Brown, hard to tell from behind Mark Wilson whether or not it's, it is a fumble before he hits the ground. 
Another look. In the end zone. Oh, oh, that's a fumble. It was a fumble all that's the way. That's a fumble. Raiders going into formation quickly, and now the official is that's getting a check from upstairs. Al Ward of the National Football League office is looking at the replay. Now, this is good. I mean, they stop things before anything goes on. That replay again, that's exactly what it's for. There they are. There's a new system of communication. This is the replay that confirms it before that knee is down. That ball is loose. That's Houston ball. Well, they saw it again. Instant replay. The play stands. Oh, no. No. Wait a minute. No way. Can't be. Where's the knee? Where's the knee? That's the only way it can be ruled that he's down. No, no, absolutely not. That knee is not down. That's Houston's ball. It is an incorrect call, but apparently it's going to stand. Now, wait a minute. That can't be. That's exactly what that system is for. I don't know how they can have that. Unless there's a miscommunication, they're still talking. Run the replay again, please, Dick Klein. Glenn Adamo, our producer. What they're saying apparently is the knee is down before the ball is loose, but he loses control of that football, Don, before the knee is down. That is Houston ball. That's what this replay system is for. You can slow it down as almost to a still frame. That ball is loose before his knee is down. I'm a big proponent of this system. But it's got to be used properly, and the guys in the booth have got to say what they see. Well, we didn't have long before we had our first controversy of the day. 9-10 remains to play in the first quarter. There's no score on the board. The Raiders and the Oilers. This can't happen. The booth is right next to us, and they're talking back and forth. Sam Bogosian of the Raiders staff saying the knee was down, slapping his knee. Didn't appear to be, though. The ball appeared on the way out before Wilson's knee was down. Let's see it again. Can we look at it again? I like the fact that they're waiting here, taking a second look. If that knee's not down, he loses control of that football before the knee hits the ground. Therefore, that is a fumble. Well, you have a couple of very competent guys reviewing it, I can assure you that, from the National Football League office who know the rules and a very close call. So right now, the game has stopped 9-10 to play in the first quarter. And now here's Mark Wilson as he rolls out, had to run the ball, comes up, the hit's made on him by Steve Brown, and the ball is free. You can't tell from that replay that we see here, but from this replay, before his knee hits the ground, even people in Los Angeles would agree that ball is out of his control. He no longer has control of the football. Jerry Glanville, of course, the way this season's gone already for him, certainly expects now to the telephone. Mike Lisevsky is the replay official. That play cannot stand. It can't stand. Well, so far it is. It was interesting, though, Trump. Dick Jorgens, the referee, said the play stands, but now we're having another review. They want to make sure. That, there you see the new system that the umpire has. He has a wireless microphone and a hearing piece so he can see what's, hear what's going on. And unfortunately, these guys on the field are blind. They're instructed not to look at the diamond vision in these stadiums. The replay phone is dead, and I don't think we'll have another play until it's fixed, and that play cannot stand. Trump, you've got to assert yourself. Hey, don't, don't lay back. That's what the replay system is for. You're right. For. No, there's no question. It is a very difficult call. If the knee is down before the ball is out, then, of course, he's a down runner. But the ball was obviously out of his grasp on the way out before the knee was down, at least in the looks we got from three different angles. The one from behind, the end zone replay, seemed to be the most conclusive. The replay official also has what is, in fact, a better system than we do at looking to the replays. He can slow that thing down and still frame it to where it's a picture as opposed to motion and actually see better than we can with our replay system. 
If you joined us late, this is Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy at the Astrodome in Houston, Texas, where the Raiders, who started out with three consecutive losses, have now come back with four straight wins, needing another today against the Houston Oilers, a team that's played very well until the end of and most games. review, the play stands. No! 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 Well, yes is the answer, so the play does stand, and the Raiders drive on. Instead of a fumble and a turnover, credit Mark Wilson with an eight-yard run. It's second down and two from the 31-yard line of Houston. McCallum gets to the 30, maybe not even that far. They're going to knock him, mark him at the 32-yard line. Robert Abraham, a very quick, tough linebacker from North Carolina State, shot the gap and nailed McCallum. Last week, the Raiders found out they had a rushing game against Miami, 214 yards. Marcus Allen had 91 in the first half, and McCallum took over in the second half. No, no. We're hearing from the truck. Wait a minute till you hear this. Third down and a long two as Wilson stands in against the big rush. Long ball to Christiansen, and he just cannot get to it at the five. From the replay booth, the official upstairs says that the field judge blew the whistle before the fumble happened. Impossible. Each week, there seems to be another excuse made for the misuse of that equipment. It's unacceptable at this point. One week, when we had the Raiders at Kansas City, the official called down incomplete pass. The official construed him to have said complete is his touchdown. Yep. Doki Williams. Chris Barr on for the field goal. Chris Barr will try a 50-yard field goal. He's been kicking very well. This young attorney, he's got it up in the air, and it might just be enough. It is a 49-yard field goal officially, and so the Raiders get points after the controversial call. There is a marker down in the field, though, and indications early are that it is against Houston. And it's going to extend the drive, which is what's hurt the Houston Oilers all season long holding against the defense on a field goal attempt unheard of the drive will extend once again for a Houston Oiler opponent if the whistle blew before Wilson was oh, down yeah. number 93 defense five yards first down well it's now they're going to take points off and go with the first down sure Chris Barr would like to have the 49-yard field goal. What was your question again? If the whistle well, if blew? the whistle blew before the uh, before Wilson actually fumbled the ball, I don't know how it could have blown a fish because he wasn't hit till he. When he runs the football, he has no protection from the linesman. He is a running back. You don't blow quick whistles. He was across the line of scrimmage and in jeopardy. Same rules for any running back on any running play. Now it is first and ten for the Raiders. They take the penalty in the first down. McCallum gets down to the 23-yard line. Robert Lyles, an outside linebacker, and Johnny Meads, the other, made the stop. Looking at the scoreboard, field goals early. Vikings up on the Browns. Steelers up on the Bengals. And New Orleans continues to lead the Jets. Chicago with Jim McMahon back at quarterback up on the Detroit Lions. New England, a tremendous football team, is not playing Pittsburgh. They're playing Buffalo, but apparently they're in the lead 7-0. Indianapolis has come back to tie Miami. Second, a long five for the Raiders. No score in the first quarter. There's a blitz. Wilson stands in. He's going to Boxdale, and it's incomplete in the end zone. Here's a flag. Don, this is all set up by a fourth down holding call against the defense that once again extends a Houston Oiler opponent drive. And now it's going to be first and goal for the Raiders. Ball intended for Barksdale, a young man with outstanding Finisher, speed. Number 29, defense, first down on the one yard line. That's a good call. The reason it's called is that Patrick Allen was not looking back at the quarterback. Ends up being a 22 yard gain by penalty first and point blank range for the Raiders Patrick Allen runs into Rod Barksdale and so there's a foul call against the Oilers and that puts the ball at the Houston one yard line power formation now three tight ends come in with Christensen Andy Parker and Earl Cooper also in 
Frank Hawkins and Napoleon McCallum are the runners for Los Angeles. McCallum, free ball. Keith Bostic shot the gap and put a big hit on along with Steve Brown, but apparently the Raiders kept it. Game clock shows 7.22 to play in the first quarter. Hawkins, the lead blocker, generally a very good blocker, but people come around. Hawkins does his job. He nails 59 Grimsley. This is a staunch defense for the Houston Oilers, but from point blank range, I don't know how good they are. Raiders have three more downs to try to bang it in. This will be from the two. They lost a yard. Play fake. Andy Parker, touchdown Los Angeles. And so Parker has a big moment. They don't go to him often, and Andy Parker's in the end zone with the first score of the day. It's the Raiders' six. The Oilers' nothing with 6.57 to play. Not a, not a bad percentage. His first catch in the NFL, and obviously his first touchdown. Lobbed very well by Mark Wilson. Points that, in my estimation, should not count. But points that do, and Chris Barr is going to look for a seventh. Raiders hoping to make the turn at the end of the day. One game out in the AFC West. They'd need an upset of Seattle over Denver, and they'd have to win here with the Raiders. Now the extra point up and good by Chris Barr, and so Houston gets it back, but on a kickoff, not on a fumble recovery. Chris, we thought we determined Mr. Trumpy to be in disagreement with the replay official. Yeah, Don, I'm a big proponent of that replay system. But we can't have these things just suddenly popping up in the judgment. My estimation of that last play was knee down, it's no fumble. The knee was not down, and Wilson lost control of the football. That's a fumble. And there's no way in the world that any official on the field can, ball, can blow a whistle because when the quarterback leaves the pocket, he's not protected as a passer. It's a number fum another fumble by the replay official. But it's also 7-0 Raiders. A 49-yard field goal by Barr was taken off the board when they got a foul call on a Houston lineman, and then they took it in on a touchdown throw. Here's a penalty marker down, so it's not raining. It's pouring on the Oilers. This will be a penalty against the kick return team, and a Raider is down. Looks like Sam Seal. That hurts. He's their starting cornerback because Haynes is out. He's still on the ground. Looks like he's holding his arm, his elbow, his wrist. They do not want Mike Hans to play today with his bad ankle and his bad calf. James Davis is now going to go at cornerback. Right arm bothering Davis, a very good coverer, too. Raiders have a lot of talent. George Anderson, their trainer, attending out of Sam Seal, along with Bob Rosenfeld, the team physician in the blue coat. Remember him, Ooh. the Raider. <laughs> Ooh, Jack Tatum, they call me assassin. One of the hardest hitters I've ever come across in my life, and he did it while you were looking at him. He never hit you from behind. I saw him flip a thigh pad inside out on Chip Meyer's leg one day, just hitting him in the helmet. Flipped it inside out. Now it is first and ten after the penalty inside the ten yard line. Warren Moon gets time, goes deep. He's got a man. It's caught for first down at the 27 yard line. Again, that XLA Ram Drew Hill out of Georgia Tech. He's not big, 5'9, but so very quick. Turning out for a 19 yard gain. Good throw by Moon. They're going at James Davis, and the Raiders continue to go with this zone. The cornerbacks are dropping off. You see McElroy at the bottom corner of the screen dropping off. Look at the cushion between receiver and defensive back. Now Davis made up a lot of ground, but this is unusual. Now Sam Seal back now at cornerback. It is now first and ten for Houston. Block ball. It'll be second down and ten. Bill Pickell, the nose tackle, might have been the first one through. Long Pickell and Sean Jones. Triumvirate of power up front. You said a mouthful. Romano, the center on Piquel there. These guys get it done almost by themselves. They got 18 of the team's 23 sacks. Piquel, Long, Jones, and Townsend. 
Now Warren Moon could see Blitz. There's a hand up. It goes to Rogier. He runs into somebody right up the middle. Piquel slipped the block and drilled him with a shoulder. Reggie McKenzie was also on the play. As third and long comes up. Browns and the Vikings locked in a 3-3 tie. Pittsburgh up on Cincinnati. New England up on Buffalo. Green Bay could be going for a second straight upset win. Kansas City's now ready to take the lead over Tampa Bay. Tim Smith is now in the game for the first time. He's flanked wide to the right, and that's where they might be going on third and eight. He's had very limited playing time this year. Warren Moon takes a look. Fires downfield. It's a pit ball. Lester Hayes had a play on it. Ernest Gibbons, that much celebrated rookie, had it tear him off his shoulder pad. This is a real player, Ernest Givens. He's not done yet. Missed that one. One of the things that teams like to do against the Raiders, because of their bump and run coverage, their safeties generally either are quick in support or very deep in pass coverage as run crossing patterns. That time Houston had one, but Givens just dropped the ball. Lee Johnson into punt to Fulton Walker. Big rush, a tremendous punt by Lee Johnson. Walker swept under. Very special team plays. Eric Fairs, a rookie linebacker, comes down and makes the stop. A 53-yard punt, a two-yard return. Raiders leading 7-0. Get the ball when we... Jim Plunkett, 39 years young, 16th year in the NFL, ready to come in if need be. Still has a tremendous arm. And one of the game's greatest competitors ever. Simply sure stated. They got him as a free agent to the Raiders in 78. Now Raiders up 7-0. It is first and 10 at their 19-yard line. First back through is Hawkins. Dang. Johnny Meads comes a hitting. 91. Robert Lyles was also on the stop. Hawkins, an important man to this football team. He's the yeller, the screamer, the hollerer in the huddle. He gets people going. 5.4 yard average by Hawkins. Some of the toughest yards running backs will ever gain. Always up through the gut. More importantly, he's the lead blocker for Marcus Allen and today Napoleon McCallum. Jesse Hester comes out on the left flank to the near side. Doki Williams out to the top of your screen. Christensen is across the 30 yard line. He has a first down for the Raiders, a 10 yard gain. Keith Bostic was covering, but not well. One of the things that you sacrifice when you go with a blitz, Don, is single coverage behind. And if you're going to single cover a guy like Todd Christensen, you see his release off the line of scrimmage coming right at us at the 25-yard line. And that was down to the right. You've got to hold him up. Very few defensive backs were big enough and strong enough to do that. for McCallum as he's knocked down to the 31 yard line. It'll be second down and 10. Ray Childress and Johnny Meads on the tackle. Childress out of Texas A&M number 79 is a player that many think is going to be an all pro in years to come. Now in just his second year. 275 pounds the number two pick. Still got to learn how to, still got to learn how to pass rush. Pass rushing in the NFL is a learned art. Almost looks like a football player. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Great against the run but still learning the nuances to the pass rush. 6'6", 275. Now it's second down and a little over nine, actually. Long nine. Seven-nothing Raiders in the first quarter. Gilgis gets the rush on. It's eluded, and now the ball is taken by Christensen, and he's ahead for a gain of about six, out to the 36-yard line. Richard Bird, 71, ran him down. Don, on almost every play, you see the Houston Oilers blitzing an outside linebacker. They try to put pressure on the outside, help their pass rush, because their pass rush, their defensive line, has only accounted for five sacks so far through seven games. And uh, Mark Wilson, not wanting to get hit, just flips it to Todd Christensen and says, you take the game tackle. There was controversy early in this game. If you join us late, Mark Wilson running on a broken pass play seemed to fumble the ball. Indications from the replay were that. But it was given to the Raiders for an eight-yard gain, and soon thereafter, they were in the end zone for the first and only score of this game. Wilson fires. Too much on it. Going to Doki Williams. He's hit hard by Steve Brown. 
They put good pressure on Wilson throughout this first quarter so far. And the secondary coverage, you see the corners up and the free safety back, man to man everywhere. The receiver falls down, overthrown just a little bit. This is a tough defense to beat, even though the Houston Oilers are one and six. We have a further explanation of that phantom fumble. I can't well, wait. The phantom, it was a fumble indeed, but the ball wasn't recovered. Right now, Ray Guy hits a long punt downfield. It's going to be taken at the 13-yard line by Willie Drury. <laughs> Willie Drury showing some stuff. He's out across the 35-yard line and out to the 37. A 49-yard punt for Drury. Ran it back 27. Ray Guy, he slowed him up enough that everybody else made the tackle, or he goes all the way. first quarter the Raiders have a seven or nothing lead on a one yard touchdown pass from Mark Wilson to Andy Parker who made his first NFL reception in the end zone. Now the Oilers have the ball first and ten the ball position at their 37 yard line. Warren Moon's been on target accepting that one pass that was intercepted by Rod Martin. Good coverage by Matt Millen the big Penn Stater back in zone coverage. Graceful as a dancer, up to slap it down. And this is as much blitzing as I've seen the Raiders do in 1986. McKenzie blitzed that time. Jerry Robinson blitzed that time. They're putting a lot of people right in the face of Warren Moon. One reason is, I think, to keep him in the pocket. When he runs, he can throw the ball very, very well. Houston, this is only their second running play, and they've got markers down all over as Rozier is hemmed in. Bruce Matthews might be called for the foul. We'll see as the clock is stopped with 1.50 to go in the first quarter. Raiders 7, the Oilers nothing. Ball start, number 74, offense. Bruce Matthews, offensive left tackle, trying to get out there to hook Sean Jones. Oilers have averaged seven penalties a game. Jerry Glanville, the man in black, and that might be a fitting garb to reflect his spirit after these six tough losses. Pittsburgh up on favored Cincinnati, 10 to nothing. And New Orleans, a big underdog, leading the Jets, 6 nothing on a pair of field goals. Green Bay up on the 49ers, 14 to nothing. After the five-yard penalty, it's second down and 15 for Houston. Seven-nothing Raiders. Warren Moon, a former most valuable player in the Rose Bowl, is again rejected by Pickell. Trying to drill that hard fastball in. And the Raider lineman slapping it back at him like a big guy at the net in tennis. Don, what defensive linemen are taught and taught very well by the Los Angeles Raiders is you get as much pressure as you can. Watch on the right. Pickell, number 71, get as much upfield as you can and get your hands up in the air. Knocks the ball away. That's the second time that Pickell has knocked the ball out of the air. Here comes a long ball if Warren Moon has time. He sets up in the shotgun. Ernest Givens is in the game with 26 receptions, averaging 19 yards a catch. field and again it's tipped intercepted Barnes comes down with the ball Jeff Barnes and the Raiders have intercepted Warren Moon twice and the Raiders have the ball at the 37 yard line of Houston Don if Warren Moon has a problem in throwing the ball it's the touch passes that one he was trying to get over James Davis number 45 we should be able to see this Davis gets his hand on the ball tips it up in the air and Jeff Barnes right there to make the interception Moon's first interception, he was blitzed by Turan. It stopped his arm. The second one, ball tipped. Once again, Raiders' excellent field position to start a drive. Warren Moon has confidence down. He needs something good to happen at a Hitson today. He's thrown seven touchdown passes this season. He's been intercepted now 15 times, two today. Wilson wants to get more right away. Hester's in the end zone. Three ball is incomplete coverage rule clean. Nice looking throw by Wilson, but the coverage was good. Patrick Allen on the coverage. The difference between that one and the interference before Don 
was that watch the defensive back when Hester gets by him and that's an excellent move watch when Allen looks back he reads the receiver's eyes and the officials are going to allow contact like that when both are looking at the football the interceptions have been a big factor in the Raiders are the Oilers unsuccessful season they have only three interceptions the Oilers on defense well they've thrown 15 on offense McCallum on second down and 10 doesn't get much he gets it to the 33 yard line 7 nothing Raiders here at Houston now let's go to Ahmad Rashad at NFL 86 Ahmad all right Don in Pittsburgh quarterback Mark Malone he loses one tackler and then finds Rich Ehrenberg in the end of the end zone great catch Pittsburgh leads 10-0 second quarter Thank you, Ahmad. We have 57 seconds and the clock running in the first quarter here at the Astrodome. The Raiders looking for their fifth consecutive victory. The Oilers, who've been close, looking to avert a seventh consecutive loss. Raiders now with third down and six. Los Angeles is in the lead, 7-0. Too much on it for Christensen out of the 21-yard line. Wilson sees the end of that play from flat on his back. Oilers came with a four-man rush. Good coverage down the field. Wilson just threw it out of bounds. Interesting, Trump. The Oilers have more yards, more first downs, a better average per play. But they're one and six. Jerry Glanville says, too, the problem is that... Uh, That's against all their opponents. Not today they don't have those dominations. Until you win, you can't improve. And they're just right now standing still with all this talent and with all the effort they're still not producing what they want and that's a win Ray Guy hits it down into the end zone for a touchback so the Oilers get a possession now they'll start at their 20 yard line fight starts up we will start up briefly tonight eight o'clock Eastern time game seven of the 1986 World Series is scheduled to begin on NBC Sports Last night might have been one of the all-timers. I think it was. As the Mets came down, three nothing in the bottom of the ninth inning and came back, or three, two runs down the bottom of the ninth and came back to win it. But right now the report is it is very, very heavy rain in the metropolitan New York area. Whether or not Game Seven will be played tonight is in question. Right now it's still on. We'll keep updating him. Of course, if it's delayed tonight, that could mean the Red Sox would go with Bruce Hurst again. What a game! Penalty markers again as the Raiders misfire in another motion that, penalty. That's against the Houston Oilers. Or the Houston Oilers, excuse me. Trying to go with a quick count. Glanville has seen this all too often through the first seven games of this season. Look at there. Raiders Six normally. Penalties. Raiders normally the most penalized team in the NFL today. Nothing. Hey, it's rule number one in offense, isn't it? Wait for the snap count. Yeah, you're supposed to. Six penalties against the Oilers in the first quarter. Mike Rozier turns the corner. And finally, uh, the post from Jerry Robinson, who comes over and gets him, the outside linebacker. Robinson's been playing great football. Two more people start up now. It's Matt Millen and Ken Hill. Boys will be boys. These are men. Kent Hill, the former All-Pro of the Rams, part of that big trade that sent the rights to quarterback Jim Everett to the Los Angeles Rams. From behind the offense, we haven't seen anything yet. This is an excellent job of running by Rozier and also an excellent job of defense by Jerry Robinson. Stringing it out, making the tackle at the sideline. Two-thirds of Houston's yards this season have come throwing the ball today and... 12 previous plays, they've passed it 10 times, run just twice. Rogier on second and long gets out to the 24 yard line. It'll bring up third down and about six. And that's one of the things about this Raider defense. Whatever you try to do, your staple on offense, they try to take away first. And through the initial stages of this first quarter, they've just flat shut down the running game of the Houston Oilers. So as the game goes on, you if you're Houston, you have less confidence in that running offense. You can start throwing all the time. That's the gun, the end of the first quarter. 
Raiders 7, Houston nothing. A coach has stood the test of that. It's Tom Landry. Tom Landry was always a man ahead of his time. He pioneered the flex defense and brought back the shotgun formation as Dallas opened fire on the NFL. Through the years, the numbers may change, but Tom Landry's equations always make him a winner. Nobody's really going to send out. off to Canton, Ohio, Ohio for one quarter of play, but the Raiders have the lead 7 0. Moon has had four deflected passes out of 10 attempts, and two have been intercepted. And he's a tall quarterback. I mean, he's not a midget quarterback. 6'3", 210. Out of the University of Washington. Bad snap. He can really throw it a long way if need be. Another tip ball. Lester Hayes comes in on the coverage. The hit was on Drew Hill. It's time just right. No foul call. And so, fourth down arises. The Oilers have to punt the ball. Now, let me tell you another thing. Once that ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage, there can be pass interference anywhere. That's a free ball. You can take a free shot at a receiver. Pakel again, his third of the day, third time. He tips the ball. There you see 71. Hit that guy on the ground. Lee Johnson, a 43 yard to try. Punter hits it downfield, and Fulton Walker takes it at the 36. Here's a marker down. We got three flags. 39 yard <laughs> punt and a seven yard return. Legal man downfield and holding. They take the bigger penalty of the two. Two falls on the offense. Ineligible downfield, number 51. Holding, number 93. Both falls are declined. First up. Raiders wave off the penalty call as we again look at the scoreboard. Jets have now rallied to take a 7-6 lead over the Saints in the second quarter. Bears continue to lead the Lions. New England still up on Buffalo. 49ers have put up a touchdown. Miami has gone in front again of the Indianapolis Colts. Eagles badly in need of a win. A lot of conversation in Philadelphia. Not a lot of victories, though. First down carry, Napoleon McCallum. And the Houston defense cuts him down at the 45-yard line. Robert Abraham shot the gap, made the stop. Short gain, second and eight. On the Raiders start this drive at their own 43 yard line you realize that's other than the opening kickoff the worst field position that the Raiders have had in this first half today and they've had it on the plus side three times already. Mark Wilson came into the game with an 82 quarterback rating He now has eight touchdown throws this season including today's Dandy Parker he has six interceptions. Second down, he needs it. Going for it all. Down to Doki Williams. Fine coverage down the play by Steve Brown. Stride for stride, and Williams had it recovered and knocked the ball away from Steve Brown. Steve Brown from the University of Oregon. His sister's a regular on the hit show Miami Vice. Sister Olivia, he's been on it. Right down here at the bottom of the screen. It is excellent coverage. Wilson now three of nine, just 16 yards. And Don, it's pretty obvious when they throw in the intermediate range, they throw to Christensen or the back. When they throw it deep, they just heave it way downfield to their wide receivers. They very seldom are involved in the game 12 to 15 yards deep. Puts it on the helmet and the face mask. Wilson has now thrown the ball nine times. He's completed just three for 16 yards, but one was for one yard and a touchdown. The game's only score. A penalty marker coming in from the back judge. Bo Easton gets him on the blitz from the weak safety spot. It's against Houston. Here we go again. That's their seventh penalty now. Seventh has been taken. Illegal use of the hands, a jam to the face. 25 defense. First up. It's on Christensen. There you see the hand. And once again, it's on a third down. It's an automatic first down. The seventh penalty taken, you're right, by the Los Angeles Raiders today. 
Look at that. They get more yards against them on penalties than their offense has generated. McCallum wisely with both arms on the ball. He's waiting. He's Raider blockers give him a little room. But he gets not very much on a first down carry. They're actually going to spot it for a gain of only a yard. I'll tell you, there's nobody that uh, spends more time trying to play professional football. You think it's a snap, and he's got a great deal. How'd you like to have that schedule every day? A lot of guys would. $800,000 signing bonus, didn't he? Well, yeah, I imagine he uh, pops for lunch or two at the uh, officers' club down at the uh, Long Beach. You asked for 3,000 men in the if they'd like to play for the Raiders. Pelaloo, 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 Pelaloo. Pelaloo. <laughs> Dropping the throw is Mark Wilson. Second down and nine, wide open is Hester. And Jesse Hester is out of bounds at the 19-yard line, a 32-yard gain. Hester, only his 11th reception, but he makes some big ones. He's averaging 24 yards a catch, and that was for a lot more than that. Don, this looks like zone coverage by the Houston Oilers. That is, you cover area, you don't cover man. And with these young players in the Houston Oilers defense, that's the most difficult defense for them to play. Heath Bostic was the closest guy, and he wasn't close enough to call him in coverage. First down, Raiders. Once again, drive extended. Raiders take advantage of it, and the Houston Oilers are their own worst enemy. And ironically, the Oilers are not that far from being a pretty darn good football team. They don't know it, though. Here's a throw down inside to the 15-yard line. Jesse Hester coming back at the ball is knocked down quickly by Steve Brown. Raiders lead at 7 0. We have 12 30 to play in the clock running in the second quarter. It's raining in New York. Game 7 of the World Series is still on, but it could be in doubt if the rain keeps up. Two out, two down. Two strikes, and they win. <laughs> Gary Carter, the engine in the Mets offense. Christensen heading for the end zone, and he's in. Bad Christensen scores his second touchdown of the season on a 14-yard re reception. His 40th catch of the year gets him in. The linebacker Grimsley had the coverage. You see Bostic 25 picks him up first and then Bostic blitzes. Turns him over to Grimsley. Playing right into the Raiders hands. Christensen made the comment to me the last time we did the Raiders. He said it's the first time we'd ever done a game when he didn't score. He says I'll get one today. Last touchdown was in the opening game against the Broncos. That two point loss. Raiders looking to avenge that a week from today. When they play the Broncos at the L.A. Coliseum. On both scores now by the Raiders. Remember, third down penalty on Houston extends the drive. Raiders get it in the end zone twice. Extra point of the day. Ready to kick it off as the Raiders you see in command. 14-0. Two Wilson touchdown passes. First to Andy Parker from the yard out. The last from 14 yards out to Todd Christensen. On this way it's gone for the Oilers today. Three plays and an interception in her first drive. Four plays and a punt. Two plays and an interception. Three plays and a punt. Warren Moon is 0 for his last six. He's also had two interceptions and five deflect deflections. Three by Bikel. Nothing's going right for the Houston Oilers offense. Bears only touchdown today. Came on a fumble return by a linebacker, Wilbur Marshall. Now the Oilers try again. Warren Moon has been intercepted twice today. Another ball in the air. I tell you, it's living dangerous every time this guy puts it up. Reggie McKenzie had great coverage that time on Jamie Williams. I'm surprised Moon tried to get that ball in there. But at least it wasn't deflected, so you look for little things. Warren Moon, a Young man who was most valuable player in the Rose Bowl in 78 when Washington upset Michigan 27 to 20. He was not drafted in the NFL, went to Canada, where he became one of the all-time greats. One year he passed for over 5,600 yards and over 30 touchdowns. Came here at over a million a season of bidding war. Worked out well, but he wasn't drafted. But he's been up and down as an Oiler player, and now they go to the run on second and ten, and there's not much there against a tough Raider defense. McKenzie filled and hit him. 
Warren Moon had a spectacular preseason, as you know, Trump, though. Consequently, the Raiders, or the Oilers, were able to trade their top draft choice. And the wisdom of that is now in question. Jim Everett of Purdue went to the L.A. Rams. They thought Moon was going to have a big season here in Houston. That's not happened so far. Uh, the thing about Moon, though, Don, is he's this year learning his fourth offense in four years. That's not easy for any quarterback. Two head coaches and three offensive coordinators in his three years here. Yes. Warren Moon throws a strike to Ernest Givens, and Lester Hayes puts a shot on him. That's the first catch. But a standout rookie, Ernest Givens from Louisville. Tell you what, though, the kid gets up. Now, see, once again, you see a change in the Raider defense. Normally, Lester Hayes is right up on Givens. But finally, he comes from out of nowhere. The Raiders are going with a great deal more zone, or at least not playing that bump and run. Very atypical of a Raider defense. Seven-yard pickup. It's good for a first down. Givens is averaging 19 yards a catch. He's caught 27 now this season. He's not big, but he's extremely fast. He's run under 4-3, and he's a great leaper. On first down, the Oilers take it straight at Los Angeles. Sean Jones knocks down Mike Rozier. I saw Ernest Givens on the field before the game. Trump said, I heard you're a tremendous leaper. Can really get up. He said, anything Spud Webb can do, I can do. <laughs> Spud's 5'7", though. Givens is 5'9". Yeah, I don't think he is. Really? He can play there. The, he's the kind of player that Jerry Glanville is looking for. Line up every down, take that punishment, come back for more. He was responsible for thousands, thousands of yards at Louisville. He did everything. Ran the ball. Averaged over 11 yards a carry one year. Caught the ball. Caught 67 one year. 1,400 yards. Turned kickoffs. Punts. Rogier runs. They're still waiting for Mike Rogier to break it loose, to show his Heisman Trophy form that he had at Nebraska. I'll tell you one thing, Bill Pakel is having a career half. He made that tackle. Romano, the center, who was just off the injury reserve list. See, right at the top of the screen, 71. He takes the other side of Romano, and he's there to make the tackle. He's doing an outstanding job so far in this first half. Big Raiders tee it up and get ready to come on third and long. Third and about six. Pass rush is coming. It's coming home. Sack back at the 20, 15 yard line. They blew him dead at the 15. First of the day, that was a combination sack. Greg Townsend flushed him first, and then Bill Pickell cleaned it up. Watch what happens. The game. Pickell steps up to draw the block of Hill. Townsend flushes him. He beats 70. Steincooler. Moon's got no place to go. A loss of 16 yards. Okay, these Raiders were really up before this game down on the field. They weren't looking at this as like an automatic W and let's go play Denver. Hit downfield. And it's taken by Fulton Walker at the 39-yard line and he darts out to the 44. Five-yard no, return. There's no flag here, Don. I don't believe it. <laughs> Bill Pickell from Rutgers. All pro quality player. In overall yards, Raiders have 103. Oilers have 78. But the Raiders have the big number. 14 on the scoreboard. Nothing at all for the Oilers. So one of their drives all the way downfield. They come away with nothing but disappointment. Now a handoff to Frank Hawkins. He's out to the 46-yard line, and that's it. One yard. Childress and Bird, the defensive ends for the Oilers, got him. Field position always important in a game. The Raiders, their field position at their own 26 on the first drive, then the Oilers 39, then the Raiders 19, then the Oilers 36, and then the Raiders 43, and now the Raiders 45. Another big factor the Raiders have going for them in their drive for the playoffs. This is their fifth road game in the first eight games of the season. So they'll be at home at the Coliseum much of the second half including against Denver next week, and there are tickets still available for that game, Denver and the Raiders. Incomplete on second and eight, so that brings up third and long now for Mark Wilson and the Los Angeles Raiders. Doug Smith came in and put the rush on him. He's a the guy they're waiting for. Bostick back in the ballgame. He was replaced by uh, Jeff Donaldson. Bostick is their strong safety. He was beaten by Todd Christensen for the touchdown, maybe 
Terry Glanville had him sit and think for a couple of minutes. And then you see Mark Wilson looking to the sideline for the play calling. Wilson's passing numbers not impressive except when they count. Down close, he's gotten into the end zone twice for scores. Abraham 56 came through a linebacker and made the hit on the re good look at it on the replay you see him gaming up front Childress going all over Abraham coming inside Frank Hawkins that's a good call arm was going forward and a fine second look our producer today for NBC Sports is Glenn Adamo our director Richard Klein we have 758 to play in the first half and the Raiders are leading the Oilers 14 to nothing now Ray Guy has to punt it again. Punted over 24 miles in the National Football League. Thirty seven yard punt by Ray Guy. Gets it down into the end zone. Houston Oilers will start. No penalties on that exchange either by the Raiders or by the Houston Oilers. Be sure and stay tuned for the second half of today's doubleheader as the Seattle Seahawks at 5 and 2 head into Mile High Stadium to face the Western Division leaders the Denver Broncos doubleheader day on NBC Sports and a standout doubleheader game it is. And then next week it gets mean in the Coliseum as the Broncos head back in for the rematch with the Raiders after the 38 36 opening day victory by Denver. Looks like it's going to be no. Wait a minute. I think they're not going, to, going to call offensive pass interference. Has and to holding be. against the Has Houston Oilers. That's who the penalties are on in this game. And you can just sense the Houston confidence ebbing. They came in ready to play the Raiders. Things went wrong, including a call early in the game that would seem to have been a Houston fumble recovery. And the glum expression of Jerry Glanville reflects a long day at the Astrodome Two again. Two penalties against the offense. Offensive interference, 81. Decline. Holding, 33. Accepted. Still first down. And holding call was against Mike Rozier. He was trying to pass protect against Rod Martin, 53 on the blitz. The Houston Oilers' eighth penalty of the first half. Jets after trailing, 6-0, now up 14 to 6. Miami extending its lead on Indianapolis. Right here in the Astrodome, it is the Raiders 14, the Houston Oilers nothing. On first and 20, Oilers try to get a little room to go, and there's not much there as the dominating Los Angeles defense, which grades out second in the NFL through seven games behind the New York Giants, Again, stuffs the run as the game clock winds down in the second quarter. The Raiders now shutting down that first down run. They put the Houston Oilers in a position where they've got to throw, and that's what the Raiders run. Want any opportunity to turn loose their pass rush. They come in with Townsend, Jones, Piquel, and Long. That's exactly the diet that the Los Angeles Raiders want for their defense. Oiler offense is not diverse. Rozier has been their only rusher today. Seven carries for 23. Long ball, open man, first down to Drew Hill, out to the 36-yard line. The so Warren Moon shows his good stuff on that throw, and Drew Hill, small and quick, is 23 yards downfield on a second and 17 play. Excellent pass protection here. And you see, it looks like people helping out. Alan Pinkett gets a block. Nice catch. Stacy Turan knocks him out. That's a big first down for the Oilers. Any little thing will give them some confidence, give them some momentum. 
These little oiler wide receivers, though, when they catch and they're getting hit, look like balls in a pinball machine. They're being popped all over that secondary by the big Raider defenders. Big rush. Warren Moon fires another strike. This is Ernest Givens. And he's down to the 43-yard line. And look at those Raiders come up and hit. But Givens, the much talked about little wide receiver, picks up 21 yards with his second catch of the day. Now we mentioned earlier that the crossing patterns against this Raider defense generally work. Turan on the inside loses sight of Givens. The Raiders are playing more zone down than I've seen them in any half so far this season, and we've seen them in four games. This is our fourth game. But watch Van McElroy get Givens on the ground. Thump. Givens prides himself on his ability to catch the ball over the middle. A lot of people won't go in there. 5'9", 168 pounds. Reverse. Givens, look out. Look at Ernest Givens, tear it loose. Givens is in down. He's going to go the distance. No markers are down. And Ernest Givens is in the end zone. 43 yards downfield for a touchdown. We talked at the outset that a great one could be on the scene. And now Ernest Givens puts on a show here at the Astrodome. What a player. Warren Moon kind of gets out in front here. You see him at the top of the screen. Hey, Jerry Robinson's fast. He couldn't get near him when he had a shot at him. Breaks the tackle of Stacy Turan, then accelerates. Almost caught at the end of this. He can't believe it. I bet about now he's saying, oh, no, I'll bet there's a penalty. But there is no penalty. So the Oilers get the big play they've needed so badly and get back in the game as Tony Zendejas kicks the extra point. And with 5.51 to play in the first half, it's a 14-7 game. The Raiders in the lead, but the Oilers' confidence could be up now. A 43-yard end around for a touchdown, and the Oilers are in the game despite a lot of mistakes. They're absolutely right. Two turnovers, interceptions, and eight penalties, and they're still only down by seven points, so things could be a lot worse. Here's the kickoff now, and Johnson booms it through the end zone, so the Raiders will start at their 20, and here comes Mojo. Mojo's a little slower after that tee than he used to be a number of years What's ago. This now? Yes! Just like we like it at the Astrodome. They call the man Mojo. He's been a longtime part of the Houston Oil organization, and after they score, that's what he does. He goes out and gets the kicking tee. And if any producers in Hollywood are looking, he is available. You can tell the Oilers haven't scored a lot of points. Mojo's been hitting a lot of peanuts there on the sideline. The replay. Whoa. It doesn't look like Bart Connor. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Raiders now as the crowd starts up. Wilson gets time and locks it down to Maholi and McCallum. And he's out to the 42-yard line. It's a first down for the Raiders on a 22-yard gain. Johnny Meads in coverage. Raiders have long relied on their running backs to catch the ball very well. Marcus Allen, a superb pass receiver. And that time with good pass protection. Mark Wilson put a good touch on the ball. McCallum just behind the defender for a first down. Marcus would love to be in there, but he's resting that troubled ankle right now, hoping to be ready to go full speed on grass at the Coliseum next Sunday against the Denver Broncos. McCallum in his place, and McCallum gets the ball again. Richard Bird shoots the gap. Big defensive end drafted in the second round from southern Mississippi. Half the Oiler players have been drafted in the first three rounds. They're quality individuals in this team, by and large. That fine art of winning, though, is something that's eluded them. Going to continue, too. They have two first-round draft choices in 87 and two first-round draft choices in 88. Al Locasale of the Raiders says if you ever want to see a guy that looks like could be a poster man for the Navy, we want you. It's Napoleon McCallum and his whites. Very handsome young man. That's, that's what they're supposed to look like, those Navy officers. Here's a throw now by Mark Wilson downfield, and Hester makes a first down catch for the Raiders. He has the ball at the 44-yard line. 14-yard gain. Patrick Allen in coverage. This is nice for the Raiders because they get Hester involved in the offense, not just heading for the end zone. Catches the ball across the middle in traffic, something they can build on, something they're hoping for. 
out of Jesse Hester a lot of times before his career is over. Oilers finally after all those earlier disappointments finally get it in the end zone and now with 345 to play and the Raiders leading 14-7 Mark Wilson goes on a first down throw. Big run. A loop ball to Frank Hawkins and he loses it at the 18 yard line. Ah, look he at Frank open. Hawkins hands for blocking he tapes his hands up and wears those pads. He is not a pass receiver that the Raiders go to very often. He's got 16 catches so far this season but it really makes him tough. It really makes it tough for him to hang on to the ball. You see he goes right through there. This ball hits him right to where it's supposed to hit him. In the hands. Oh Eason and Johnny Meads going to come together. That should have been a catch. Uh, it's Grimsley and Bo Eason 59 and 21. A reminder to our viewers that we'll be selecting the Budweiser most valuable player for today's game at the conclusion of the game. Wilson on second and ten. Knowing a free ball is incomplete at the 23. Bo Eason, the free safety, whose brother Tony quarterbacks New England, was nearest to the ball as the fellows start up again after the play. And this time it's the Raider offense and the Houston Oilers defense. Generally, it's the Raider defense that starts and finishes things on the field. Vikings up on the Cleveland Browns and Pittsburgh coming off that disaster last weekend with New England when the Patriots routed them 34 to nothing up 17 to 3 on favored Cincinnati. Bears extend their lead to 10 nothing over Detroit. And New England's up 10 nothing on Buffalo. New England's as good as any team we've seen. This is the 18th game we've done this year either on television or NBC radio. When they're on they are absolutely fantastic. They're the best we've seen when they're on. But they're not on every week. That's the problem. Third and ten now. Houston's got to avoid a penalty. Third and ten, and McCallum breaks it, but not enough for a first down. Here's a free ball. The real down. He's down, though. He'll be just short of the first down. It was a third and ten play, and he got about nine. Now down in the NFL is when your knee hits the ground and the ground the turf cannot cause a fumble. He's down and the ball is loose. That's no fumble. Good call. That does not make up for the one in the first quarter though. Fisher ruling we got was that in the booth they saw it as a fumble and recovery by Houston but from the field came word that one of the officials had blown the whistle be prior to the fumble. So the Raiders maintained position possession this was back in the first quarter when they subsequently went in to score the game's first touchdown. This is a good punt. This is a great one. Four Down to the four yard line perfectly angled by Ray Guy. At halftime, we'll be going to NFL 86 in New York for a complete update as the season goes at a halfway point today. Ray Guy, two punts now short of 1,000 for his career. Still the only putter ever drafted in the first round in the NFL. Am I correct? That's, yeah, that's, what right. they, that's what they thought of Ray Guy's talents. He's not disappointed them. Tremendous athlete. That was his 1,000th career punt at halftime at NFL 86. We'll be hearing from Paul Horning along with Bob Ahmad and Paul. The Golden Boy into the Hall of Fame this year. Into the College Football Hall of Fame a year prior to that. And in court the year before that. And he won the suit <laughs> with the NCAA. And he won the suit. The team is back on the Golden Boy. Dropping. He is down to the 35 yard line. Now they're going to rule that he's down at the 50. It was an interception, the third of the day in the first half of Warren Moon. But they rule that Seal was down where he intercepted the ball at the 50, and so with 2.40 to play, Raiders get it back. And Warren Moon has slow up for this ball. If Warren Moon airs that thing out, I think they've got a completion because Drew Hill's got Seal and McElroy beaten. 
But it ends up being the third interception of the day for the Raiders. And the 16th of the season for Warren Moon, who's thrown for just seven touchdowns. He was down, Don, because all you got to do once he's down is put your hand on him as an offensive player, defensive player, is considered tackled. Raiders will be trying now to get more before halftime. McCallum likes to get the ball a lot. He's been getting it a lot today, running it straight at Houston. He's to their 46-yard line. Mike Golick, the nose tackle, was on the stop. His brother's a starting nose tackle and a pro bowl player, Bob Golick of the Cleveland Browns. I wonder what their parents did to them when they were young to make them grow up to be nose tackles. You don't mistreat them, I realize. Maybe they locked them in their room for an extended period of time. <laughs> you mean like making a dog mean time? Yeah, you know, something like that. Bob Golick said the one thing about a nose tackle, if people are amazing, you can read and write and talk. I think you're something out of Neanderthal times. Two minutes to play in the first half of the Astrodome. We'll be back with the Raiders leading by seven. Important drive now for the Los Angeles Raiders. If they get points here, they could put the game away, at least the way the Oilers have played in previous games. But if the Oilers can stop, they'll be right in it. Don, I agree with you totally. With uh, the eight penalties the Oilers have had in the first half and the three turnovers still trailing by just seven points, they can go in feeling good about themselves, which are very, very important for a team like Houston if they can stop them. Keep the Raiders from scoring points in this drive with, with a, un, just under two minutes left. Wilson to Doki Williams. He can fly. Oilers got their only touchdown on a similar play. And Givens took it in from 43 yards out. Good this job. And the Oilers shut it down. Don, excuse me. Good job done by Jeff Donaldson. He was not fooled one bit. He's a safety. You've got to keep in your lanes. And watch Easton 21 bottom of the screen. He sees the handoff. And then Donaldson 31 along with Brown 24 right out there to slow him up. And then the big guys come in and make the tackle. Golik and Bird. Mostbar, Don Mostbar, number 72, the Raiders center, is one of the most highly regarded players in the league at his position, down over the ball. Hanna and Marvin as guards. Davis and Lawrence, the Raider tackles. Heavy pass blocking now and third down and five. Christensen now with the game clock down to 102. Too much time. Too much time is called on Los Angeles. What Houston was doing, they had 10 guys up at the line of scrimmage. Wilson was trying to come with an audible, probably just to pop somebody through there. That's the Raiders' first penalty of the day, Don. Well, this, is, this is where Houston's got to pretty much throw the book at them. Any blitz they can think of or come up with, they've got to stop them. He points off the board at the end of this first half. Quite a disparity. Hughes, 8 for 65. Flags against the Raiders, or against the Oilers. Now it is third down and 10 for the Raiders. Big rush on Wilson. Stands right in and throws it. Strike for a first down to the 33-yard line. Doki Williams off the right flank. Post pattern, 17 and a first down. As we spoke before, you sacrifice coverage when you go with the blitz, and Doki Williams just turned Steve Brown every which way, but loose, easy completion for Wilson. Big first down, Raiders drive extends. An investment for 17 yards and a Raider first down as Los Angeles continues to lead the game 14 to 7. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy, 52 seconds to play at the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. <laughs> The Raiders hoping that Seattle knocks off Denver, that the Raiders win here. And after a 3 and 0 and 3 start, they make the turn into the second half of the season. One game out in their division. Although Al Davis said before the game, the real key is the five teams that are ahead of you in the bid for the playoffs. Those are the teams you have to beat out. Only five to go. Christensen, his second of the day. Somehow he does it time and again. Todd Christensen, the all-pro tight end of the Los Angeles Raiders, slips free, second touchdown catch of this day, his third of the season. That one good for 32 yards as the Raiders lead it 20 to 7. He gets a free release, fakes the out and up, and Jeff Donaldson, 31, is the man that fights. Grimsley's on the inside. He is not the man in coverage. 
That's on Jeff Donaldson, 31, the safety. If you don't hold a guy like Christensen up at the line of scrimmage, he'll kill you. He'll kill anybody, not just the Houston Oilers. Big day for Christensen. Four catches for 60 yards, two for touchdowns. Forty-six seconds to play in the half. Chris Barr hits the point after, and the Raiders extend their lead to twenty-one to seven. Back with the Raider kickoff after this. Kicks off again with the Raiders in the lead, twenty-one to seven. Forty-six seconds to play in the half. Alan Pinkett, a rookie from Notre Dame, a third-round draft choice on the field for the first time, takes it out to the twenty-six-yard line. On back to that touchdown. Watch what happens. 46 is Christensen. Meade, the linebacker, that's all he does to hold him up. This guy's averaged 80 catches a season for the previous three seasons. You turn him loose on a kid like Donaldson, he's got no chance whatsoever. The linebacker, you get him to the ground. You make him stumble a little bit. You take him out of the pass route. If he's free and clear, that guy will catch 10 touchdown passes against you. Two today. Look at his numbers. NBC statistician Dennis Manishin pointing out now that two of Warren Moon's three interceptions have been subsequently turned into 14 Raider points. And that's their margin of lead right now. They're up 21 to 7. Moon to Pinkett who lost the ball. Ruled incomplete. It'll be second down and 10 for the Oilers. I think they're going to give that to him, Don. They are. Unfortunately, though, with the new rule in the NFL, the ball is fumbled out of bounds. He went back about four yards, so it's going to end up being about a two-yard game. Second foot down with control of the ball. One, two. He's got it. And then the ball is punched loose by Barnes. But where the ball rolls back is where the officials place it on the field. Ends up being a yard and a half game. Now, no more in the NFL do you take the forward progress when the ball is fumbled out of bounds. It goes where the ball is fumbled out of bounds. <laughs> Low snap again to Moon. Boy, he can fire that ball. He gets it out to Willie Drury. He's got a first down, but time's a wasting. 27 seconds left as the Oilers call a timeout. James Davis was covering on the play. Two of the best Los Angeles players in uniform, but not in action. Mike Haynes, their all pro cornerback, is out again with a strained leg muscle. Marcus Allen is sitting out today's game at least so far he too in uniform but Napoleon McCallum doing well running the ball now so far the uh, Los Angeles Raiders best player has been the Houston Oilers team on penalties Vikings are for real going to a six and two mark at the turn if they win today Al Toon of the Jets just caught a 68 yard touchdown pass from Ken O'Brien Jets extending their lead Bears with a 10-point advantage on the Lions at halftime. New England, an unbelievable team when they hit the go button, routing Buffalo 17-0 in the second quarter. Green Bay holding to a slight seven-point lead over the favored 49ers. We're 27 seconds from halftime here at the Astrodome. At halftime, we'll be going to NFL 86 in New York. A report on the World Series in Game 7 scheduled tonight, although, as we mentioned earlier, a lot of rain in New York today. It could be postponed. Mob and Mott and Paul are there, and so is another Paul. Paul Horning with Paul McGuire. Mott Costas and Ahmad Rashad is right now. It is first and 10 with 27 seconds left in the half. Hip ball, good coverage by 45 James Davis of the Raiders. And you know, that's the first pass thrown in the, in the direction of Tim Smith of the Houston Oilers. This kid is a real favorite here in Houston. Got over 150 balls over the last three seasons, but Dick Jamison, the offensive coordinator of the Oilers, and Jerry Glanville have said this kid's just not fast enough or quick enough. And much to the chagrin of Houston Oilers fans, he's not had any reception so far this year. From the shotgun, as you see, 21 seconds left. Townsend's man. Piquel's got it, Don. Yes, he does. But Greg Townsend hunting the quarterback gets him. And the ball is back in the Raiders' hands with 15 seconds to play. And they're in field goal range already for Chris Barr. Don, that looked like that Townsend ran around outside of Dean Steinkuhler on the right. You'll see him come from the right in just a second. There he is, strips the ball away. 
Pikel on Kent Hill, 72. Pikel right there. He has had a monstrous first half. Deflected three passes. Comes up with a fumble recovery. And the Raiders can put more points on the board. Look at here. What a half. What a half by Bill Pikel. Two yards deep in the end zone. Mo Eason and Patrick Allen covering, but they were a stride behind the super fast Doki Williams from UCLA. That was awful close. The Oilers came with the game up front and the blitz once again, single coverage. And he stretches out. Look, his, his shirt is already down over his shoulder pad when he's running that pattern. You don't think somebody pulled that down there, do you? Could happen. Just kind of fell down there, did it? Try one more shot and take the field goal. This one's got to go in the end zone. I think they're going on an out pattern just to get it down close. Throw it in the end zone. Got to get out of bounds. Wilson looking. He does go into the end zone. Jesse Hester goes for the ball. It's incomplete. And so the Raiders will try a long field goal with three seconds left in the half. Steve Brown in coverage. It looked like Hester, once he got to the end zone, slowed down. Chris Barr will be on so far this season. Chris Barr has been very good. He's hit 12 of 13. I told him before the game, I said, you're kicking like a kid. He says, I've been lucky. I said, where's the luck? And he says, I've made most that I've kicked. He really has. He's having a good year, Chris Barr. Came in with 12 of 13 field goal attempts made. He hit a 49-yarder that came off the ball and the Raiders got a penalty first down and now he's wide. But they don't count the 49-yarder, they take it down and this one's just a bit wide and that's the final play of the first half. The Raiders capitalize... Maybe yeah. an awful lot of people don't know the snap count. It's not just the penalties either. Three interceptions by Warren Moon. Two sacks. Bill Pakel has had a heck of a first half, but look at these negatives. Uh, two interceptions resulted in 14 points. The seven pass deflections, they, they are a real mystery to me. Pakel's got three. Warren Moon is not a short quarterback. He's six feet three inches tall, and he eight penalties. The Houston Oilers just keep shooting themselves in the foot. Halftime numbers, such as they are. Neither team with any dominant offensive totals. The Raiders with 199 total yards. The Oilers with 159. But look at the interceptions. Turnovers. Three interceptions of Warren Moon and none of Mark Wilson. Two of those interceptions were turned into Raider touchdowns. And there's another negative for the Houston Oilers. They do not have a first down rushing. Even with 66 yards rushing in the first half, they do not have a first down rushing. So they've had to go with the pass and through deflections, the Raiders have come up with those uh, three interceptions. And so we're set now for the opening kickoff of the third quarter, and Chris Barr will kick it off as Jerry Glanville, Council's running back Mike Rogier, who's had the ball virtually every running down for the Oilers. Chris Barr into the ball. Two fleet Oilers are back deep. This is Drury at the 10. He's out to the 22. The Oilers have some very small players. Drury's one of them. They list him at 5'9", but they look like they're five, six, or 7 when you're down next to him on the field. But they have the one ingredient you can't teach or put in no matter how you try, and that's speed. Two things you can't coach, speed and luck. The Oilers have none of the latter. They have bad luck. <laughs> I guess they do. <laughs> they have no good luck, that's for sure. Tim Smith in the ballgame now is a wide receiver for the Houston Oilers. Tim Smith has caught over 80 passes three years ago, then over 60 and in the 40s last year, but he's virtually played not at all this season. Trying to get a more speed in the lineup. Now they go to the run, and there's not much there. Jim Romano, an ex-Raider out of Penn State, is the center for the Houston Oilers, a very strong motivator. He fires up his team, has been out with an injury back today. Eric Moran's in at left guard for a player that some regard as the best offensive guard in football, Mike Munchak, who's out with a knee injury. He'll be back this season. The ex-Ram All-Pro who came in as part of the deal that sent Everett to quarterback to the L.A. Rams, Kent Hill, is at right guard. 
Stein Cooler, number 70 at the right tackle. Got every award a lineman can receive as an All-American in Nebraska. Outland Trophy, Lombardi Award. He's been troubled by a bad knee. Missed virtually all of two seasons. The other tackle is Bruce Matthews, a number one draft choice from Southern California. So there's quality in the front. But the Raiders might have more in their defensive line. That time the defensive line took care of Rozier too. Howie Long slowed him up. Bill Pakel made the first shot and Sean Jones makes the tackle. So it's third down and about, uh, let's make it five, maybe six. Buster Hayes has done a feasibility study of the Raiders' chances. We're going to get to that in a moment. <laughs> Third down, and Moon and the Oilers need seven. He throws off the run, and it's dropped. Player hurt himself. Nobody hit him. Willie Drury must have fallen on the ball. Fallen on his arm. Drury had it and lost it when he hit the ground. Looks like his shoulder, Don. The blitz is coming by the Raiders. You see Barnes, 56 all over Moon. What's he do? Yeah. It looks like he lands right on his upper arm, right on his elbow. And that's the ball, that's the hand he was trying to catch it with. Incomplete pass still being attended to by doctors and trainers on the field. And this field, the Astrodome field at the original Dome Stadium, has all the give of a parking lot. Yeah, they actually fixed it. You can see around the edge of the turf, dirt. They used to lay the turf over dirt. A number of years ago, they put asphalt underneath here, and it made it a little better, but of all the turf fields, uh, this is the worst. And down on the field before the game, Al Casale was complaining there was a board, one of the yard lines at about the 45-yard line. It's actually a board painted white, some AstroTurf on top of it. And said, look at this, we have to play on this. I said, that's only for the Raiders. They put that down here when the Raiders come in. They have a tightly knitted field when anybody else comes in. No, it's bad for everyone. Everyone but the Strohs. Astros, champions of the National League West. Willie Drury still down. He came down hard on his right shoulder going for a pass in the flat on third down. They're looking at his shoulder down uh, up underneath his sleeve. So Willie, a very important player to the Houston Astros, come up. And he's in a lot of pain. Houston Oilers. Houston Oilers. You know, it's not a good situation when people looking at him have ties on never is he's their punt return man and kickoff return man too so that hurts Houston all the more this telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League there's the board we were talking about earlier it is intended for the private use of our audience and any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the National Football League and the Oilers is prohibited downfield punt by Johnson is taken by Fulton Walker of Los Angeles Straight line, the shortest distance between two points, and Walker runs it straight ahead, 18 yards on the return. The scoreboard in the third quarter. Browns get a touchdown, trail at Minneapolis 17-10. The underdog Steelers, not quitters, after being routed by New England a week ago, they're leading the heavily favored Cincinnati Bengals. New England, a team that laid waste to the Steelers, doing the same to the Bills at Buffalo. Now the Lions score on the Bears. It's a 10-7 game. Stacy Turan slow and getting up. Thirteen seventeen left to play in the third quarter. Raiders have not played here since 1983. They're a bit wary of the Astrodome, are the Raiders. They've lost two of their last three games here. Hawkins on first and ten gets to midfield a three-yard gain. Robert Abraham, a linebacker, got him for the Oilers. Robert Lyles, John Grimsby, Robert Abraham, and Johnny Meads are the backers for Houston. Up front, they have Ray Childress, Mike Golick, and Richard Bird. Steve Brown and Patrick Allen are the corners. Keith Bostick and Bo Eason are the safeties. Now into the lineup. And Golick down over the nose tackle. Doug Smith and Golick have been alternating at nose tackle. On second down and eight, Mark 
Wilson gets time and lofts a high ball under thrown to Jesse Hester. He catches it anyway, and he's not done till he's down inside the 10-yard line. 42-yard play, a badly thrown ball, but Hester was so wide open that Mark Wilson can't believe it. He's got a smile on his face because almost looked as if uh, <laughs> almost looked as if Hester could have fair caught that one. Look how high in the air Wilson throws this when he's looking all over the field. The defensive back falls down. The man in coverage was Patrick Allen. Now it's going to look like Bo Eason was the man in coverage, but Patrick Allen, who had him man to man all over the field, tripped and fell on his own field. We just talked about that turf. 42 yard pickup. Now four catches, 92 yards for Hester. He had only 10 in the first four, seven games, only 10 receptions. The Raiders go to the run now. Take it straight ahead on a first and goal play. McCallum gets it down close to the seven yard line. It'd be lights out for the Oilers if the Raiders go in now with 12-19 to play in the third quarter. Next for Houston, a trip to the Orange Bowl in Miami next Sunday to play the Miami Dolphins. The Raiders go back to the Coliseum to play the Denver Broncos. Tickets are still available for that game. It takes 92,000 for the Coliseum to be sold out. Swing to Hawkins off the hip catch. He's down to the three-yard line. Robert Lyles ran him down as the Raiders are knocking on the end zone again. Don, let me tell you, the Raiders got away with an illegal play. They had Todd Christensen coming in motion, and he made contact on the defensive back, and it's kind of scraped off the linebacker who was, watch what happens. Watch what happens here. He gets in on Bostic, and see, he holds up the linebacker, 93, Lyles and Lyles is the man in coverage and the running back out in the flat. All teams do it and most teams get away with it. Defensively the Oilers rank 11th in the whole NFL. Raiders capitalizing now and now a throw and a catch as Todd Christensen could be headed for a career day. He was saying something I guess Trump when he told you he was going to catch some today. Uh, he was interested in getting in the end zone. Keith Bostic was the man in coverage. Now watch what happens. Meads try, tries to hold him up, but look at the hand fighting. He just makes up his own pattern there, Don. A guy that gifted, now three catches, 63 yards. Uh, excuse me, five catches, 63 yards for three touchdowns. Wilson's waiting only on him. You can see he's the only receiver out. Last three touchdown day for Todd Christensen was an 83 against the Chargers. Extra point is good. Penalty markers are down. It makes little difference now. With 11.07 to play in the third quarter, the Raiders are in command 28 to 7. It was against Houston. So the extra point counts. Outside, number 24, defense. The point is good. Five yard penalty on the kickoff. So Christensen with three touchdown receptions today. And the Raiders take a 28-7 lead. We'll be back with the Los Angeles kickoff in just a moment. Warren Moon, this is what he likes to throw on the run. He can really motor, averaging five yards a run. When he led the Edmonton Eskimos to five straight Great Cup championships in the Canadian Football League, the whole offense there was a run and shoot offense with Moon sprinting out. He's very mobile. You see his average per carry. He came here in that bidding war. He had the same coach, Huey Campbell, but they made him into an NFL drop back passer, and he still isn't comfortable with it. He's used to that big open field in Canada and firing on the run. One year he passed for almost 5,700 yards. Another year he threw for 36 touchdowns. First year he was here, he was running Kay Dalton's offense, who was a holdover in the Houston coaching staff, and then Hugh Campbell put in his own offense the following year. Joe Farragalli is the offensive coordinator. Now Gary Huff is working with him. The quarterback coach is on second and one. The Oilers take it at the Raiders and get a first down. Here's the way the Oiler drives have gone today. Interception, punt, interception, punt, punt, TD, interception, fumble, and punt. Not very good. Ernest Givens on the bench. An upset stomach, you say. Okay. It's Mojo behind him, waiting to get that kick in T. Those Raiders give some people upset stomachs. Finally sacked back inside the 30-yard line, the third sack of the day 
for the Raider defense. Jerry Robinson got through. He's been playing terrific football. A census All-American from UCLA, a number one draft choice of the Eagles when they were under Vermeil. Now a Raider and a very good one. They're coming with a lot of blitzes. You see 55 Millen. And you also see Jerry Robinson making the tackle. And they, the Raiders are basically going with a five-man rush to try to flush Warren Moon out of the pocket. Tell you one thing, Denver's going to have big trouble next Sunday against the Raiders at the Coliseum. You think so? I think so. Ah! Well, this team is on its way to winning its fifth straight. They certainly have the momentum. This, this defense is dominating. Warren Moon stands in, fires a pass, and it's off the hands of his tight end, Jamie Williams. Perfectly catchable ball, and Williams hears some boos, and he should, as he had the ball right in his hands on the run, a perfect lead throw by his quarterback. Now the Vikings with a 10-point lead over the Browns. Pittsburgh taking no prisoners. They lost on a punt return, or actually a fake punt and a kick. Hunter ran it in for a touchdown on a Monday night for the Bengals to give them a two-point win. Chicago holding to just a three-point lead over the Detroit Lions now in the third quarter. 49ers and Packers are tied. Kansas City looking for a fifth look. Townsend Jones again. Got rid of it. Townsend again. You see Steinkuller number 70 right behind Warren Moon. Townsend beat him like a drum all day long. Dean Steinkuller knows it too. It'll come from the left-hand side of the picture. It's an outside pass rush. Now, the play takes a little bit longer because the snap is low. But both Jones from the right, 99, and 93 Townsend get there. Lee Johnson from BYU, ready to punt the ball. Colton Walker from West Virginia, longtime Miami Dolphin, ready to run it back now for the Raiders. Forty-four yard punt by Johnson, a six-yard return. Raiders go back on offense. 9-19 to play third quarter and a 21-point lead for Los Angeles. The Astrodome in Houston, Texas. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy and NBC Sports, the home of the 1986 World Series. Game seven is scheduled tonight for Shea Stadium in New York. And it's still on despite heavy rains all day. Eight o'clock is the airtime Eastern time. Five o'clock Pacific time for the pregame show as Napoleon McCallum turns the corner and gets down inside. And he doesn't get to midfield and is fouled out of bounds at the 47-yard line. A 12-yard run for McCallum, who's having a very consistent day. He's been pounding out yardage, 49 yards now and 14 carries. Weak safety makes the tackle. That play was made possible by a great block by Frank Hawkins, leading McCallum out through there. He absolutely put the outside linebacker Meads on his back. Like every team Trump that's having problems, the local media has not been kind to the Oilers. One writer described playing Miami, the Oilers, and Denver, the Raiders schedule for three weeks, like they're having a sandwich with nothing in the middle. The Oilers are another team in that schedule. After the Raiders won at Miami next week, last week, and go home to play Denver next Sunday. And I'll tell you, though, the more coaches you talk to around the league who have played the Houston Oilers, when the game is done, they are very thankful that they get out with a win. With the talent on this football team and with the manner in which they uh, they should play in the future, it's, it's opposing coaches look at the films and it's hard to believe that you dominate a team like the Houston Oilers. This is the only game that they've really been out of so far in 1986. Marcus has himself a choice seat on the sideline being held out today. Still a little problem with that ankle he injured early in the season. Wilson on second down, looking for eight in the first down. Going for a lot more than that as downfield as Hester and the play is broken up at the five-yard line. Let's watch center Don Mosbar of the Los Angeles Raiders. Only the third center in the history of the Raiders. Jim Otto was the first. Dalby was the second. He's got people around him who can pretty much do the job. He's just got his head on a swivel to help wherever help might be needed. He is a huge fellow. Why is it centers play so long? Centers don't normally play that long. It's just for the Raiders they do. Now you look around the league, they play 
it's the longest standing position from a longevity standpoint in the offensive line. Well, in the offensive line, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know why, but the new nose tackle with the 34 defenses has changed that a great yeah. deal. They used to they play without a guy up. in front of him. Nice breakout. Coming over to break the ball. Back at three was Richard Johnson, a number one draft choice two years ago out of Wisconsin, who hasn't had a lot of productivity so far for Houston. He did on that play, knocking it away from tight end Todd Christensen. Again, most bar. This time he picks out a linebacker to block just to keep him off the quarterback as best he possibly can. Ray Guy, great natural athletic talents. Scratch golfer when he plays a lot. And Alan Pinkett is now back deep, waiting Ray Guy's punt. Big rush, they don't get to him. Pinkett comes up on the ball, fair catching it at the 16-yard line. Nobody back there to talk to him. He could have run it back. 35-yard punt and no return. Oilers start out first and 10, but once again, deep in their own end and way down on the board. Battle the Raiders. Before your team takes the field, our team hits the air. NFL. The suburbs of Houston sits Bum Phillips, the man who coached the Oilers so successfully that was fired one year after they finished 11 and 5. They'd love to see something like that now. Yeah, that's the last time that the uh, Houston Oilers had close. a winning record. You can find a lot of ex head football coaches lying around Houston here. Change has happened. Losing makes you change, whether it's a good move or not. And one thing the Houston Oilers are not afraid to do apparently is change. Sometimes it's not helped. Long ball, Warren Moon going down, and the ball is caught at the 40 yard line. 39 yard line of the Raiders, a 45 yard gain to Drew Hill. Sam Seal was the man in coverage. This was just a track meet, a foot race. Warren Moon said, Big guys, give me time. Drew Hill, you run as fast as you can down the sideline. He looks off the weak safety, keeps looking to the right, knowing all along he's going to Drew Hill. And Hill makes a nice catch here. And the Seals not, that's not bad coverage at all. Big pickup. With a 45-yard pickup. We need a lot more of those, and in a hurry, eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Here's a handoff, and Wolfolk tries to run the ball, and the Raiders give him nothing at all. Pickell comes over, throws him back. Also on the play was linebacker Rod Martin. They're going to a new pitcher, Oliver Luck. And he's been warming up all day. I'll tell you one thing about the Houston Oilers, they are still without a rushing first down today. When you take away half of a team's offense, have the Raiders, as the Raiders have done against Houston, I mean, you, you've got them dominated. And if you can't run the football, you can't win in the NFL. Second and 12, Warren Moon tries up top again. Throws a strike to Tim Smith, the most popular Oiler player. He hasn't had much playing time this year. That's his first catch of this season for Tim Smith. Good for 21 yards. The guy who averaged over 60 catches the last three years. Well, the fans like it, that's for sure. Very active in the community. Lester Hayes has the man-to-man -man coverage. Smith goes in, he initiates the bump. Moon with good timing gets it right to him. 21 yard pickup. Oilers in business in this drive, Don. Yes, they are. They wanted more speed at the flanks, so they put in younger players with more quickness, but Tim Smith has the nine second hands. He catches it. Too much time. Here we go again, Houston. Another misfire on the part of the Houston Oilers. Vikings holding to a seven-point lead. Steelers continue to lead. The Jets dominating the New Orleans Saints now in the third quarter. We have 6.28 to play in the third quarter here at the Astrodome. Eagles on three field goals up on San Diego. Here at the Astrodome, the Raiders leading 28 to 7. At halftime, they're up 21 to 7. Gifford Nielsen, now a broadcaster for the Houston Oilers, a former quarterback, said, there's more talent on this team than you would really believe. 
but they find a way to make it not happen. Warren Moon has been having problems today. Th some balls beautifully on target, others errant and tipped and intercepted. He's had three interceptions today. And while Warren Moon struggles on the field, on the sidelines, Oliver Luck, his backup now warms up. That's the fourth sack by the Raiders today. Rod Martin, you notice that Howie Long is, I'll take that back, was on the bench. Now he's still on the bench. He's being attended to. He has a cramp, you understand. Seattle at Denver, the second half of the NBC Sports doubleheader today. As another throw downfield is in the hands of this one to Butch Wolfolk. Now they're going to rule incomplete down at the 15-yard line. The Seahawks and the Broncos at Denver next on NBC Sports following this game. And then Denver moves in for a rematch with the Raiders at the Coliseum next Sunday. Tim Smith, number 83, in the seventh year from Nebraska. Stein Cooler, another corn husker. There's a cramp in his hamstring. How long on the sideline? You believe with a bill like that, he just started lifting weights this year? No. He grew up no. that way. And too much on the ball as a step on the defense was had by Drew Hill. Warren Moon comes in high, and again, he hears the displeasure of the Houston fans with 5.32 to play. A couple of Raiders Trump might have run into each other. And they sure did. It was a real collision, too. Lester Hayes and Van McElroy. One thing to get hurt by your opponent. One another to get hurt by your teammate. Hayes, a big corner, played at 2.20 last year. He's down about 2.08 this year. A lot better in coverage, although worth repeating, I've seen less of the bump and run by the Raiders today than I think I have all season long, Don. Don't know why. Here's they've also come with more blitzes today. Zendejas only one of three outside the 40. He's eight for ten on field goals for the year. And Zendejas hits it up and through. So the Oilers come down without coming away with disappointment. They do get three and trail 28 to 10. With Bob Trumpy, this is Don Cricky back at the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. 5.27 to play in the third quarter. The Raiders lead the Oilers 28 to 10. Lee Johnson ready to kick off now for the Houston Oilers. All-American kicker for one of the great BYU teams of Lavelle Edwards at Brigham Young. Well hit ball downfield soccer style and it's going to be taken down in the end zone and Adams will down the ball there. He wanted to come out. Golden Walker advised him better of it and so the Raiders will start at their 20. Today Mark Wilson has thrown four touchdown passes. You know who holds the Raider records for touchdown passes in a game? Tom is Flores. Going. Against the Oilers. This was at Frank Ewell Field which was 1963. You ever see Frank Ewell Field? No. Nothing but scaffolding. 10,000 seats on one side, 10,000 seats on the other side. I think that's, uh, that's 84. I was going to say Clem Daniels, I believe, was 34. to 10 and the Oilers will have it first and goal on a big play by a defense that's been good all year grading out 11th in the entire NFL comes from the left hand side and Wilson sees it he's trying to run away from it and before he can get that ball going forward it's loose like a room service hop to Golick finally one of the first bounces to go in the Houston Oilers way through seven games and it stands no word from the replay official that's the first turnover of the day for the Houston Oilers. Two of the Oiler interceptions. There have been three who were turned into touchdowns by the Raiders. Now they position the ball at the seven-yard line. First and goal, Ra Oilers. The umpire is talking. After the review by the replay official, the ruling of fumble stands. 
first up. Yeah, where was that in the first quarter? That's the easy one. The officials on the field can make that play. That's the instant called replay something to appease some restless natives. The instant replay is for use like the one in the first quarter. Houston fans still unhappy over that first quarter call. A fumble by Mark Wilson ruled a non-fumble. And the Oilers didn't get the ball and shortly after they gave up the first touchdown. Now let's see if Moon can take him in after a big defensive play. Wolfo turning outside. He got three down to the four-yard line. Second and goal from there. Reggie McKenzie knocking down. Altoona the Jets has caught three touchdown passes today from his quarterback Ken O'Brien as the Jets are laying waste to another opponent after beating Denver on Monday night. Buffalo's on the board but not with much against the tough Patriots. Now the Oilers trailing 28 to 10. Second and goal from the Raiders four yard line. Roger, he's in. Hands it up. Touchdown down the goal. Roger shows his running ability at its best. A cutback run. He beat the tacklers. Roger's second rushing touchdown of the season. Wolfuck has a good lead block in front. Watch number 40. He takes on, I can't pick up the number, but that opens the hole. Matthew 74, the left tackle, gets the defensive end inside. Big gaping hole for Rozier to run through. And we can see from this side. Now it's Jeff Barnes, 56, he blocks out. Great block by Wolfuck makes that touchdown easy. Then Dejas hits the extra point, and all of a sudden there's something to cheer about here in Houston as the Oilers start to move the ball and get some points, and they have now scored 10 points here in the third quarter, and they trail in the game 28-17. Down before the ball game, we were talking to Jerry Glanville. He said, I can't get mad at any of these kids. There is no quit in them. They work hard. They keep working hard. They never give up. He says, I can't yell at them. And as you were pointing out, the opposing coaches say the same thing. Absolutely. They just, it, it's amazing. They just keep shooting themselves in the foot. Two of the best in the tough AFC West hook up in the second game of an NBC Sports doubleheader today when the Seattle Seahawks go against the Broncos at Denver's Mile High Stadium. That's coming up after this game where we have 4.28 to play in the third quarter and it's now 28-17, the Raiders in the lead. Next week, the second half of an NBC Sports doubleheader will match the Denver Broncos and the Raiders. That'll be at Los Angeles in the Coliseum. John, this would be a great time for an onside kick. If you could, if, if, if you think maybe the Raiders would be thinking about someplace else, this would be a perfect time for an onside kick. I, I think I'd whack it downfield with your defense, which has been playing well, trying to get it back. Look at the charge this Johnson puts into the ball. Out of the end zone on the fly. Very nearly across the upright. Interesting, Zendejas does now the... Now he goes Mojo, he's going off the field fast. He's not rolling anymore. Oh, he just broke he's his got glasses. A left. He's not rolling anymore, he's dying on that sideline. <laughs> I was going to say, Lee Johnson does the kicking off, soccer style, he's the punter. Zendejas is the field goal kicker, he takes care of the extra points and field goals. across the 25-yard line out to the 27. I live near the former Yankee great Trump, Yogi Bear, as you know, in New Jersey. Last year, Mojo, somebody told him that, and he came up to me, and he's the greatest fan in the world of Yogi Bear, and he said, could you send me something from Yogi? So I had Yogi autograph a baseball and send it to him. This year, I sent him Yogi Bear. <laughs> That's of course, very the nice coach, of you. Coach with the Astros. Very nice of you. One way to beat the Blitz, and I think the Oilers right now are going to keep coming with the Blitz, is running the football. Strap on a hat and get in there. Another 
defense coming up again now with a hard hit on a second down in three play. The knockdown is made at the 28-yard line, a gain of just a yard. Mies and Bostic see the Oilers really attacking that line of scrimmage, trying to fill each gap with the Raider running backs no option and have the pursuit catch up to him. This is a big third down here. Third down in about two. This is when you find out who you, your offensive coaches think your best lineman is. They run behind him. Raiders are all good. Wilson stands in. Look at the catch by Todd Christensen for a first down. John Grimsley knocked him down, but Todd Christensen, who's having a superb day, makes maybe his toughest catch of the day. He's been in the end zone three times with the ball. You see that Bostic is doing no good whatsoever holding him up. And then 25, Bostic gets scraped off by Grimsley, 59, the linebacker, and that is a great catch. His sixth of the day. Everybody wonders how Christensen constantly gets free against all that attention he gets. I think one of the things that nobody gives him credit for, he's fast. He can run fast. He cuts underneath that zone and comes across the field, and they don't stay with him. Plus, if it's near him, he gets it. He doesn't miss. Now it's first and 10 for the Raiders. With an 11-point lead, third quarter, they go to Vance Mueller, the rookie back from Occidental, takes it out to the 36-yard line. Christensen's one of those guys, too, that you got to get him involved in the offense early in the game. Not for his sake, but just so the defense knows we're aware of Todd Christensen. It changes the way the defense plays when you can get the ball to him. Remember something Johnny Unitas told us one time. He said, when you've got a great player, you've got to get the ball in his hands. He said, we had John Mackey. He was the best tight end in football. He said, when they double and triple him at the line, we give it to him on a tight end around just to get the ball in his hands. The great players have to have the ball to do you any good. Now on second down and eight, a big rush on Mark Wilson. He gets it away, and he throws a strike. It's good for a Raider first down. Out to the 48-yard line. As Doki Williams gets downfield, makes a 13-yard catch. Takes the big hit and holds on. Wilson has had an outstanding day today. He stands in there. Pressure all over him. People falling at his feet. 79 Childress is hanging on to a foot. Still gets it off to Doki Williams. It's Steve Brown in coverage, and that's a tough catch. But the minute that ball hit his hands, he got hit. Wilson now 15 for 29, 15 completions, 29 throws, 217 yards, and four touchdowns. End up to McCallum on first down. He breaks it down to the Oiler 48-yard line. He got three. John Grimsley, a third-year linebacker from Kentucky, knocked him down. Watch Hawkins once again. Real fire plug in there. Excellent blocker. Doesn't block to the man. Blocks through the man. And Bostic is out of the play. Grimsley has to make the tackle. This kid's yards sneak up on you. You know that? He gets some four or five yards at a click into the game. He's 50, 60, 70 yards. Are you going to keep that Peleliu important until after the playoff? Oh, I would imagine. I would imagine. Because when that goes out, that goes for a while, doesn't it? And so does Ensign McCallum. We do have helicopters. At the end of the third quarter, it's 28-17. Raiders over the Oilers back after these messages from your local station. And in coverage by Patrick Allen. Got himself between the quarterback and the receiver. You see Wilson is watching the crossing pattern, but he's flushed. Jeff Donaldson, 31 right in his face. There's Allen. Gets underneath Hester. And the Raiders offense, uh, excuse me, the Oilers offense back on the field for another shot here. Completions, 19 throws, 117 yards. He's been intercepted three times. He has to hit the big throws now as we start down the stretch of this game. Luke Lee, he's got his hand. Tight end, Jamie Williams from the left in the open field. And Williams takes it down to the 35 yard line. Remember, he heard the boos earlier when he dropped the ball. This time he turns a catch into a 33 yard game. The coverage is not bad here, Don. You can see that Stacy Turan 
who almost drifts the ball away, but Jamie Williams with good strength hangs on to it. I also noticed that Howie Long still not back in the defensive front for the Raiders. Greg Townsend is playing defensive end. Wilfolk in motion. Sean Jones comes early. We'll see if he was drawn offside. I'd say the odds are it's against Houston, wouldn't you? Boy, I tell you, that is very inadequate start, performance. Number 74, offense, still first up. Bruce Matthews. That's 11 penalties. Matthews been one of their most consistent performers. And there's Mike Munchak. They're and all they're, shaking their heads. You use the word, they say the word great is used too much. There is a great football player, Mike Munchak. Regarded as the premier guard in the National Football League by all the opposing scouting services. Okay, he blows it five yards off the line. His zone blocks, cleans him out, but he can't play now because of a knee problem, and it's first and 15 after a yet another misfunction. Warren Moon is sacked back at the 50-yard line, the fifth time the Raiders have caught him, and Jeff Barnes caught him hard. Now, the thing that surprises me is that the Houston Oilers are continuing to try to block the outside linebackers with running backs. This time, Barnes runs right over Wolfock, number 40. There you see 40 on 56. They roll up the leg of Steincooler. Everyone's all right. But the fifth sack of the day. Not where you want to be against this Raider defense. Second down and 23. Mike Aku, a second-year player from Hawaii, is in the game for the first time. He's flanked to the near side. Tip ball incomplete. Boy, that's happened to Paul. Oh, ten today. tip balls today and eight. Eight tipped balls. Have you ever seen that happen? No, much? no. And, and Warren Moon is an upright thrower. He stands way high and throws over his head. And they're still able to tip the ball. Pickell had three in the first half. I don't know how you coach against that. So now on third and forever. Third and 23 for the Oilers. Warren Moon from the shotgun back to his 39. It's a poorly thrown ball. But it should be pointed out there was a very good rush against him. Greg Townsend was smoking in there, heating up on him. They got all the defensive linemen kind of packed in there. And Townsend continues to get the outside rush on Stein Cooler. 93, 70 are the two principals. Townsend's just in a foot race, foot race with Stein. Look at the negatives. Look at the negatives. Woo. And they're still in the game with... 12.51 to play, Raiders 28, Oilers 17. Johnson, a towering punt. He punts the ball, as you see, barefooted. Fair, fair catch is made at the 10-yard line by Fulton Walker. An excellent punt, 40 yards, and... No return, planning it inside the 20 at the 10. Raiders get it an offense when we come back to the Astrodome. Kings at Minneapolis, the Steelers, a big underdog en route to a blowout of their rivals, the Bengals in the AFC Central. The Jets now in a ball game. New Orleans comes back within eight after trailing 28 to six. Bears holding to that three-point lead on the Lions. New England extends its lead over Buffalo to 17 points, and the 49ers break the tie and go up on Green Bay. Now the Oiler defense, good-looking unit, takes on the Raider blockers as Hawkins comes at him and doesn't get much. First and 10 from the 10-yard line of Los Angeles. The gain is for about one yard. Now let's swing back to NFL 86, where Ahmad Rashad is standing by. Ahmad? All right, Don, in Minnesota, Curtis Dickey playing for the injured Ernest Biner, takes the handoff and goes 17 yards up the middle for the touchdown. Cleveland ties the score at 20. It's in the fourth quarter, and on the ensuing kickoff, Cleveland recovered a Viking fumble. Thank you, Ahmad. So Brown's making it happen in that game at Minneapolis. 
Right now, the Oilers defense will be a coming on a second and nine play. McCallum breaks it up the middle, and he gets a Raider first down. Super trap blocking. Today's game is brought to you by the heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet. By Budweiser, beets with aged for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. And by Apple Computers, makers of the Apple II and Macintosh families of personal computers. John Hanna with an excellent block that sprung Napoleon McCallum for an 11-yard gain, and here comes McCallum again. And Charlie Hanna, brother of John Hanna. Boy, they both play a long time. John lasted 13 years. Charlie's in his 10th year, both out of Alabama. Once again, McCallum's numbers kind of sneak up on you. The Oilers are trying to come with a blitz down on almost every down, and the one way you beat a blitz is a trap. You can get somebody penetrating across the line of scrimmage, blow that guy out, and Charlie Hanna had a monstrous block on that last 11-yard pickup by McCallum. McCallum has uh, maybe the main ingredient for a standout runner, and that's durability. He can take it a lot, take the pounding, just like uh, the man he's standing in for, Marcus Allen can. Marcus being held out of this game. He is in uniform, still troubled by a tender ankle. But right now, McCallum running towards 80 yards, moves the ball ahead. Game clock is down to 10.25 and running in the fourth quarter, and the Raiders holding to an 11-point lead. While at the Naval Academy, McCallum was not only their leading rusher, but he was their main punt returner and kickoff return man, too. So, even with his 4 o'clock wake-up call every day and full duties on the Peleliu in practice, somehow he finds some energy somewhere. Taking a time out here. I don't know why. We pointed out earlier, Trump, this Raider team was very, very up for this game. They, they weren't coming in here with, let's just go through four quarters, get a win, and go home. They knew it was going to be tough, and it's turning out to be. We'll be back after this. Best players, Howie Long of the Raiders is sidelined at the moment. His right hamstring hacked with ice. Yeah, the report we got was a cramp in his hamstring. That does not look like the way they normally treat a cramp. That looks like a pull. Standing right next to Howie Long was Kurt Marsh, who was on the injured reserve for the Raiders. Very gifted young offensive lineman. We do want to point out again, you are still not yet licensed to practice. That is correct. But you had some injuries. <laughs> Third and two, McCallum over the top. Napoleon McCallum with his best day as a Raider now has gained 80 yards, and on that carry, on a third and two, he goes over the top for a first down. Hawkins once again makes this possible. A good lead block up there. Actually, he doesn't make contact with anybody. <laughs> but a good hole blown out by the offensive left side, Charlie Hanna and Bruce Davis, along with Mose Bar. And it's an easy pickup. Bo Eason, the safety, has to make the tackle. And he's going to the bench for a little breather. Shortly, those of you in Seattle will be leaving us to watch the Broncos Seahawks game. We will keep you informed on the game throughout the rest of the afternoon on NFL 86. Right now, we have 9.42 to play at the Astrodome. The Los Angeles Raiders with the ball are leading 28-17. Yes, yes, and the Raiders, following today's play, head home to play the Broncos at the Coliseum. There are tickets still available. We've been asked to inform the Los Angeles fans. And up goes to McCallum, and he's out to the 39-yard line. First down carry, got three. The Raiders huddling at their leisure as they run the clock down to nine minutes to play. Eason back in the ball game, Don. Seems to be all right. McCallum scratching for yards, but he didn't get any. Seven straight times now that Napoleon McCallum has carried the ball as the Raiders go to their runner to run the clock. Ray Childress and Robert Lyles are on the stop for Houston. Looks like Bruce Davis is on the ground, Don. Yeah, he's up and veteran left tackle for the Raiders. 
McCallum never takes himself out of there. Bruce Davis. McCallum never takes himself out of the ball game. I guess that's not a luxury afforded any rookie in the NFL, but as long as they keep calling his number, he's got to keep taking it. I'll tell you, in a way, the injury to Marcus Allen might have benefited the Raiders in the long run because they had to play McCallum, and he's turned into a real player right away. The other thing is the team learned it can win without Marcus Allen, the yeah. league's most valuable player in 1985. This will be their third win in a five-game win streak. They've been without Marcus. Long ball. Coverage is there too. It's incomplete at the 28 yard line. It was Patrick Allen who broke it up. Last time they went at him, you remember, he intercepted. Jesse Baker got some heat on the quarterback, Mark Wilson. Patrick Allen was the man in coverage. There's a bump here, but both looking for the ball, so they really don't call it. Hester is pleading for the flag. Need to look at Keith Bostic. A shot right in the chest of Mark Wilson. Those are the kind you feel in February. Hit downfield by Ray Guy, who had a hurry to get it off. Fair catch is made by Alan Pinkett of the 28-yard line. And so the Oilers, with 7.56 to play in the game, get the ball back. And now Cleveland down at one point, 20 to three, has rallied back to take a 23-20 lead over the Vikings at Minneapolis. Steelers with a lot of Steeler pride after being blasted 34 to nothing at home last week, and back to rout the Bengals today. New Orleans easing back into the game with the Jets. Bears now holding to a six-point lead. They just got a field goal from Kevin Butler. Six for the Raiders today. Sean Jones like gets is. a hold of him. Now let's go back to Ahmad Rashad at NFL 86. Ahmad. All right, Don, in Indianapolis, quote quarterback Jack Trudeau makes this last ditch effort to score. It's caught by Walter Murray, but ruled out of bounds. The Dolphins hold on to win the game 17 13. Thank you, Ahmad. And so the Indianapolis Colts, 0 8 at the turn. But they have a big lead in an important race, the Vinny Testaverde race. The quarterback from Miami of Florida is going to be the number one player drafted by the NFL next spring. Here's a throw. Butch Wolfolk doesn't hold on. It brings up third down and 18. I think Ahmad said that was final, wasn't it? Miami yeah. beating Indianapolis. First final of the day. Look at that. San Diego shut out again. How can that much offense score so few points? Now that team did a job on the Rams and did the same to the Falcons the following week. And then where'd the they go? You can't win them all. Be San Diego, point. on the other hand, scores 50 points in the first game. Can't score much after that for the remainder of the season. So close. A third down throw by Warren Moon. Just a little bit too much lead on it for a diving Tim Smith. And so with 7-16 to play in the game, the Oilers are forced to send their putter Lee Johnson back out. Man coverage again. Just slightly overthrown. You see the coverage man underneath is James Davis. Almost a big catch. throw a pass here. They need two scores to get in this game. End over end punt. Walker, a fair catch, loses it, but gets it back at the Raider 44. And so with 7.08 to play in the game, the Raiders gave the ball and an 11-point lead. I don't know. It's been the biggest story in this game as the Raiders have turned Houston Oilers interceptions into points in the first half. Two interceptions of Warren Moon were turned in touchdowns. Oilers aren't a bad team, but they had the continuing problem of misfiring. I agree with you. The Raiders' only concern right now, I would believe, is who's going to be healthy for next week against Denver. With Howie Long on the sideline with an ice bag on his leg, even though it's still reported as a cramp, I wonder if there isn't a twinge in that hamstring, a pull. And you certainly hope not. With Mark 
with Marcus Allen already out, Mike Haynes with a bad pulled muscle. You can't afford against a division opponent like Denver an injury to your best defensive player, and that's how he long. There it is. I think he'd be ready. I, th I think even if it's slightly pulled, they don't want to risk him in a game with their, where they have a substantial lead. True, uh, but there's one, there are very few injuries that can keep somebody on the bench and a hamstring, a high hamstring pull is one of them. You, know, you can play with uh, dislocated fingers and bad shoulders, but a, a hamstring just absolutely keeps you right in the starting blocks. Well, I think you'll see Mike Haynes, who didn't play today or last week, and Marcus Allen, who didn't play today, and Howie Long, who's on the sideline, going up and down the Coliseum field like it's the Olympics. Big game days. Guys play with broken legs. They do? They have. I had a guy. I played with they a guy. Have. His name was Pat Matson. He was a messenger guard for the Cincinnati Bengals in 1969. Played three quarters on a broken leg and was complained to by the coaches that he wasn't getting the plays in fast enough. Nolan Ryan of the Astros had a cracked bone in his ankle. He pitched five games of a five innings of a playoff game on a partially cracked ankle. Now what's there for Frank Hawkins on a first down carry. He's out to the 48 yard line as the Raiders trying to run the clock have it down inside seven minutes to play now holding to a 28 to 17 lead over Houston. One of the in indications of how a defense is doing is how many times you call the defensive line for tackles as opposed to linebackers and defensive backs. The guys numbers that we've called the most today I think are Bostic and Bo Eason. That means they're getting through that front line and the safeties have to make the tackles. Two leading tacklers for the Raiders, ironically, are their safeties, Turan and McElroy. Look at another tremendous catch by Christensen who goes way up and comes down with the ball for a Raider first down. Tell you one thing, if Keith Bostick never sees Todd Christensen again in a football uniform, it'll be too soon. Christensen's caught seven today. He has 46 for the season. Good for 81 yards today and three touchdowns. See the contact. His hand fights him off. He does it very well, and he doesn't get caught. <laughs> they wrap him, hammer him. Have they tried handcuffs? He doesn't miss when they get it close. Shackles. Tie his shoelaces together. He'll still catch the ball. Hawkins on first down. Both arms on the ball. He's out to down to the 36-yard line of Houston. Raiders controlling the ball and the clock. Running it right at Houston. Robert Lyles and John Grimsley were on the stop. Raider coach Tom Flores under control. When they were 0-3, told his team, told anybody to listen. He said, we're a good football team. 0-3 by a margin of 11 points. That's why I think New England's such a good team. Their opponents were 17 and 4 that beat them, the three opponents, starting today's play. Starting next week, too, is Raider time. Since 1982, the season of 1982, as I said at the outset of the program, the Raiders are 21 and 7 in games played in November and December. They've made you know, three times, three straight times a division champion and been in the playoffs every year since 82. And starting next week, that's when the Raiders are in business. That's when you win championships and get to the playoffs and hopefully the Super Bowl. Another interesting afternoon for the Raiders, Trump, is going to be December 14th when the Kansas City Chiefs go to the L.A. Coliseum. Flores. A lot of warm feelings after that first meeting. Really, Flores doesn't get a lot of credit. What's the holding on the tight end? We got uh, delay of game. He, he deserves it. Flores in his eighth year as head coach of the Raiders has three divisional championship teams and two Super Bowl winners to his credit. Now with 421 left to play, the Raiders go back into a huddle. This team is known to be a team of characters. That's plural. Some real uh, some real dandies out there, but it, it takes even more work for a head coach to get them all to practice on time and get their uh, attention all focused in the right direction and Flores has always done a spectacular job of that. 
Well, a lot of that is overplayed, too. I think the Raiders and anybody in the league will tell you have as many quality people as any team, maybe more. You get guys like Marcus Allen, Mike Haynes, Plunkett, Wilson, Christensen. These are quality leaders. And right now, the ball is overthrown to Doki Williams and many more. It's too many to name, but they're loaded with leadership, this Raider team. And they lost some leaders from last year, too. You know, Dalby retires, Lyle Alzado retires. There's a lot of people there. That last penalty on the Los Angeles Raiders, too, just their second penalty of the game, and both have been for delay of game. And Oilers. Lawrence has been a tremendous leader, playing for 13 years now. Right tackle. High punt hit downfield by Ray Guy. Pinkett lets it go in, which it just does, and so it comes out to the 20, and the Oilers will try again. 40-yard punt by Ray Guy, but 20 comes off on the net yardage. When you look on the other side of the ball in the Houston Oilers, Don, you know, they've got quality players, too. Players that come from winning programs like Warren Moon, like uh, Rozier from Nebraska, like Steincooler from Nebraska, Matthews from USC, Jim Romano from the uh, Raiders. I was talking to Coach Flores one day from talking about the Oilers roster. He said, you know how many games you have to lose to get guys like that, like Munchak and Steincooler? These were some of the top players picked when they came out. It continues, too. Wilson is out to the 31-yard line. 11-yard gain, but the Oilers aren't that far away. Toughest thing to find might be great offensive linemen in abundance, and they You're have right. them in abundance. You're right. Uh, Jerry Glanville took a new approach in 1986, too. He started voluntary camp in March, and about 60 players showed up. As a matter of fact, after Jim Everett was drafted, he only missed one meeting until training camp started. And they worked in pads a few days because everyone was learning a new offense, a new defense, took their time, started in March. Fight for the ball between Tim Smith and the defender. It falls incomplete at the 46-yard line. He was fighting James Davis for it. So that brings up third down and 10 now. Continuing our thinking about the way these two franchises are set up, though, for the Los Angeles Raiders, they have 10 former players as employees. One, a former Houston Oiler. Mike Reinfeld is their con controller. And for the Houston Oilers, the one thing that's remained consistent about this team is change. New coaches, new coaching staffs, new uh, quarterbacks, new players. A real swinging door here in Houston. Well, they've made a commitment to Glen Glanville. Jerry Glanville has a five-year contract as head coach. Here's a swing and a catch. With the ball is Drew Hill, and he's ahead on long yardage for a first down. He got 17. He's been a consistent performer today. The Raiders still going with the man-to-man -man coverage, although loose. You see Sam Seal kind of dropping off of Drew Hill. Finally, Jerry Robinson and Stacey Turan there to help on the tackle. Warren Moon looks and throws, and it's too much on it. Going again to Drew Hill. That'll make it second down and 10 for the Oilers. The ball positioned to their 48-yard line with 2.54 to play, and the Raiders in the lead, 28-17. to Talking to Glanville before the game, he said the difference between us and the Raiders is we don't know how good we are. We don't have enough wins to really document to ourselves how good we are. We can't afford turnovers or any kind of mistakes. So the Raiders team, they can make all kinds of mistakes, have the interceptions and the penalties, and still figure out a way to win. So we haven't learned that yet. Two streaks going to be extended today. The Raiders win streak to five. The Oilers losing streak to four unless something big happens. Now, let's quickly swing back to NFL 86 in New York. Here's Ahmad. All right, Don, in Minneapolis, with 12 seconds left to go in the game, the Vikings had a chance to win the game into overtime, but Chuck Nelson misses the field goal from the 45. Vikings lose 23-20. Thank you, Ahmad. Surprise there. The Vikings, 5-2, looking to go 6-2 and two at the turn and stay a game back of the Bears, but the Browns come from way behind after they were upset by the Packers last week. Win the game. 2.49 to play here at Houston. Oilers trying to get back in it. Down by 11 in the fourth quarter. And again, Moon has way too much on it. He was looking at Tim Smith. 
Penalty marker down, though, in the Raiders secondary. Let's just guess it's against, it's against, oh, it's against the Raiders. Well, I don't believe it. Illegal use of the hands, a jam to the face. Number 37, defense, first down. That was Lester Hayes on Micah Q. We know that Tom Flores can throw the ball, but Tom's going to work on his hands here. He's wide open. And he lets it slip right through there. Come on, you got to catch those, Tom. Look it into your hands. That's it. Catch it before you run with it. First and ten throw. Too high, but Drew Hill came down with it anyway as he heads for the sideline. And did he get there? He did not. With 2.35 to play in the clock running. So the Oilers quickly go into alignment without a huddle. Now they're going to. Now they're going into. Two minute offense. Right to the shotgun goes Warren Moon. Open man takes it at the 31 yard line. That was Ernest Givens, a 16 yard gain. I'd be looking at him a lot at our Warren Moon. He's open a lot. A two two minute, minute warning is yep. given now with the Raiders in the lead 28 to 17. We'll be back for the final two minutes of the Astrodome after today's MVP is Todd Christensen of the Raiders who caught seven passes for 82 yards three for touchdowns. Budweiser will make a contribution to the United Way on behalf of all the MVP selected in today's games. Raiders heading towards a fifth consecutive victory. Their projection at the outset of every season is to make the turn at six and two because they usually play a lot of road games in the first half. Five of their first eight games were on the road. So scheduling will be with them in the second half. They'll settle for a five and three start too. Uh, the Houston Oilers have three timeouts, just took one, so there'll be two remaining. Seattle and Denver, the second half of today's NBC Sports doubleheader coming up from Mile High Stadium. A most important game as the Broncos lead the AFC West at six and one and Seattle comes in with a five and two record. Interesting stat our NBC statistician Dennis Venetian pointing out that when Warren Moon has started for the Oilers they've won eight games and lost twenty nine. People said John Elway wasn't a winner but as a starter he's something like thirty one and nine. At a million dollars a year too I'm sure there are a lot of people in Houston not particularly happy about that record eight and twenty nine. Mark Wilson is a starter for the Los Angeles Raiders last big year winner. was 11 and 2. Big, big winner. But not all of the things that happened to Warren Moon are his fault. Two deflections today for interceptions. Raiders are so experienced, though, so much in concert. One quarterback goes down, Plunkett went down, they plug in Wilson, and the same is true when Wilson went out against Kansas City. Plunkett came in and played superbly. Just win, baby. Moon's also had eight drops today, counted by Dennis Benition. Now it is second down and seven. Hand off goes to Hawkins. Oilers fighting to get the ball, calling a timeout now with 1.30 to play in the game. Now you want to pick up the time a little bit in NFL games? You give them the timeout, and they go right back to the huddle, and you run the play. There'll be 90 seconds expire here before the next play is run. And this is where games that start out to be three hours long end up being three minutes, three hours and 20 minutes long. Everybody just standing around out there. All you're trying to do is stop the clock. So stop the clock, let him get back in the huddle and go right back to playing. This is an interesting huddle. Game seven still on for tonight despite heavy rains earlier today in New York. Oil can Boyd goes for the Red Sox. Ron Darling goes for the Mets. Tough to top game six no matter what happens. Won't be easy for oil can at Shea tonight. 
game six of the 1975 series involving the Boston Red Sox and the Cincinnati Reds turned by many the best game ever played in World Series competition I think last night had to be close it's not the echo Hawkins turns the corner and gets out to the 25 yard line and again play is stopped with a timeout and two Raiders are down they look more tired than they do anything else a couple of Raider fans here tough to find those jerseys in Houston Texas I would imagine 122 left to play in the game the NBC doubleheader today the Denver Broncos and the Seattle Seahawks at Mile High Stadium in Denver and then is on to game seven of the World Series tonight at Shea Stadium in New York Winners tell jokes, losers say deal. Marcus Allen enjoying himself. He's telling jokes. He'll be ready next Sunday when the Denver Broncos come to the Coliseum. Christensen with three touchdown passes, his best performance of the season by far. Touchdown wise, had a good day. The referee is going to give him every last second, needless as they may be. Ray Guy is on the field now to punt the ball for the Raiders. All 11 guys are up too, Don. Yes, they are. They might loop it downfield. Look at this. They didn't get to it. And so the ball carries downfield. This will be a big one for Ray Guy. As it rolls on down inside the 15-yard line, down to the 14, a 56-yard punt. Nobody back helps Ray Guy's average with 108 to go. The Oilers come out to fire for four downs, do the best they can. But now it'll be too little too late as the Raiders have a 28-17 lead with just 68 ticks left on the clock. There are some real fans here from the Houston Oilers. Yeah, a lot of these folks out in their cars killing armadillos. Tough to drive around the state of Texas apparently with uh, uh, running over one of those things. They turn them into boots, though. Not when they've been run over. They don't make good boots. And Givens comes to the near flank. Drew Hill at the top of your screen. Givens is bumped, but it's ruled a clean play by the Raider defender Sam Seal. Now let's look at the scoreboard as almost all the 1 o'clock Eastern games are final. Vikings lose to the Cleveland Browns after winning big or leading by a big margin. Pittsburgh's upset Cincinnati. Jets hold on to beat New Orleans. Chicago does the same to go 7-1 with a close victory over Detroit. New England, a tough-looking outfit, blows away Buffalo. That game was over early. Miami beat Indianapolis today and Kansas City... With a seven-point win over Tampa Bay, makes the turn at five and three into the second half of the season. Next Sunday, we start playing the back nine. Here's a pitch up the middle, and Drew Hill takes it out to the 33-yard line. The doubleheader game is underway at Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado. We'll be going there shortly. A field goal by Rich Carlos of the Broncos has given Denver a three-nothing lead over Seattle. Rams and Falcons scoreless in a big one at Anaheim. Rocco catches the ball. Still fighting for yards. He's down to the 45-yard line. The game clock keeps ticking on down. The Oilers out of timeouts. 23-yard gain. Moon got hammered by Greg Townsend that time. Right back into action. Warren Moon from the shotgun goes the distance. Taran might have a play on the ball. It's incomplete. Five seconds left. Time to reload and refire one more time. Warren Moon is thrown for over 300 yards today. And nine times he's thrown for 300 yards. Eight losses as the starting quarterback for the Houston Oilers. Isn't that something? That's why running the ball wins you championships. Passing the ball just gets you lots of yards. Well, he passed it a lot, 45 times, 304 yards. And again, where statistics can be misleading. 
The interceptions have been a big turn in this game. And think about that. He's thrown for over 300 times, 300 yards, nine times, lost eight games. Long looping ball. A lot of white shirts around it. Tipped into the end zone, incomplete. And the game is history, and the Raiders extend their win streak to five in a row, heading back for a game next Sunday against Denver. Coming up next on NBA.